call to order the council meeting for March 12th. Stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Madam City Clerk, could you call the roll? Quorum is present. Okay, before we get started, DR3 is pulled. DR5 is going to be continued until tomorrow at 4 p.m. DR4? DR, DR3 is pulled. DR5 will be continued until tomorrow at 4 p.m. I'm sorry, what's the question? She wants to know if there are copies of the document available as yet. No, no. it's not. It, it will be available by the end of the meeting tonight, though. Okay. So then you'll be, you can put, make them available to the public. Right. Sure. Right. Okay. okay. Right. They'll be on. <laughs> item, uh, any persons wish to address the city council on any item of today's agenda other than closed session in the public hearing may do so at this time. Do you want to speak, ma'am? No. Yep, of course you can. Uh, on anything that's on the agenda, is it something on the agenda? And, and, and even if it's not, we'll accommodate you. Go right ahead. I've noticed of late that City Council and the City of Inglewood has been trying to raise money for the city. I came up with a proposal for the forum. Now I realize it has been bought by another company, but many churches in out of state as well as um, around the country have looked for rental spaces that are at the capacity of which the forum can, get to, can fulfill these needs. And um, I'm in contact with the Inglewood Church in Texas, and it's been numerous of times tried to rent the space, and it's been denied. And it's been forced to go to other facilities in downtown Los Angeles um, because of the transformation of ownership at the time. Now, I know that it's very unethical, probably because most of, the, most of the facilities in Inglewood are used for sports events and things like that. But I think it would be beneficial because of the capacity of tax revenue that can actually be driven through churches using facilities like the Forum in places as such. Now, I would like you know, for the council to take in consideration on using that space because it would be beneficial to tax exempt as well as tax revenue because a church can also revenue finances within the city limits. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Mayor, Council, my name is Joseph Texera, District 1. It was alluded to by the city manager, but I want to point out that uh, as of 1 o'clock today, it, it, right before the meeting it was on, but uh, at 1 o'clock today the attachments for DR2, DR3, DR4, and DR5 were unavailable on the city website. I also want to challenge the approval of the minutes for February 5th because the city clerk conveniently failed to include my comments that night pointing out that the city clerk has apparently continued to be involved in illegally refusing to respond to my public records request along with the city attorney and IPD or whoever. For instance, this request has been stamped four times by the city clerk. 
in over two months, and I've got no response from anyone in the city clerk's office, city attorney's office, even though the law says, the law demands that the city respond in no less than 10 days. So hiding that fact, the fact that the clerk is not living up to her responsibilities under the city charter and what's ever <coughs> noted on the city website, uh, hiding that fact by omitting public comments from the official minutes of these meetings is not new for the clerk's office, but it's still wrong. Roy Fisher of the First District, uh, with regard to uh, this residential sound insulation, uh, you know, people with uh, single family homes have been trying for many, many years uh, to get their homes insulated, and uh, now you're coming up with duplexes, triplexes, and fourplexes. Uh, I, I, I don't think that that's a very good idea with regard to uh, uh, those people who have single family residents. And now you're trying to make all these uh, contend to be uh, single family residents. I think it's wrong. I think that you ought to go forward and do all those single family residents first and then consider the, the duplexes, triplexes, and fourplexes uh, as single family residents. You know, I was sorry that you uh, pulled uh, uh, DR5, but I would hope that the residents of the city would come back tomorrow because they have a habit of trying to pull uh, the wool over the residents' eyes, and uh, hopefully that you're not here to understand what's going on with regard to this. Mr. Texera, just talked to you about uh, not being able to get information from this city. I told you last week when I was in here that I tried to get some information about uh, a property at 9305. Uh, uh, that uh, on, on Van S that uh, happened to be supposedly selling marijuana. Uh, I came over here and I got the information, or tried to get the information. Uh, the clerk's office was good enough to go over there and try to get it for me, but you know, that was in vain because they wouldn't tell me who owned the property, they wouldn't tell me when the property was uh, uh, put into any papers or what papers they were put in. They didn't tell you anything about it, you know. So, Mr. Texera is right with regard to uh, uh, this city not wanting to give out information. You know, it's wrong. I've asked for other information with regard to the city and uh, haven't got it. Uh, th this, uh, there's a lot of things that are going on in this city that is truly wrong, and I would hope that the residents of this city would begin to wake up, to become involved, and to understand that we're getting nothing for a whole lot of money that we're throwing away. My name is Alfonso Parker, Jr. I'm a Vietnam veteran, 66, 67. I was also a conscious objector, and I went into, that means I went into Vietnam, was sent there by the military with no weapons training, and I'm blessed for you to be looking at me and me looking at you. There's a lot of us on that Vietnam wall that didn't make it. Uh, on the uh, page uh, four, Department reports DR1, residents of sound insulation. Uh, I was looking this over, and it was a big issue before this change was made, and now it's brought back in, slightly altered, or I won't use the word altered, so slightly uh, adjusted. But to me, it still reads the same, because you're still putting all these different minority programs to cipher off the money from the residents with these additions. I've had experience years ago in Long Beach with one of my family members that I had a triplex. And if I remember correctly, one of the requirements for these uh, type of structures to qualify for residents was that the owner had to live in one of the units. And my brother, therefore, who he leased his property or rented through uh, Compton Junior College out there, by living in one, he qualified to get funding for those units because he rented to uh, the school to put students, student housing is what it was. So I like your idea, but I think you should have in there to minimize or uh, open the floodgates that these owners of this property must be a resident within one of those triplexes 
quadruplex, whatever you call it, or four units, they must be a resident, basically a resident of Inglewood in one of those income pro Otherwise, anybody with property can buy that property and live in Hollywood, and it's income property, and they got a mansion over there in Beverly Hills somewhere. So I think should be a requirement in this as well, is that those people who are the owners tax that pay the taxes on that property must be a resident in one of those units in order to qualify for the soundproof. Gil Matthew, uh, District 4, uh, Mayor and City Council. Uh, concerning the uh, sound insulation, property owners, single families should have priority into uh, defined duplexes, triplexes, and quadplexes. It is not going to do any good to the city because what it's giving uh, owners of property with no condition as far as improving the property and raising the rents. <clears throat> so it should be some caveat in there where you keep it affordable or whatever values increase when it's re, uh, when it's sound insulation, <clears throat> some of that uh, value should revert to the city. <clears throat> but it's still the, the single family occupied on the property owner should have priority because we've experienced many times when the properties are improved, the owners simply change the rules as far as the rent and raise the rent and the tenants are displaced. So that's not doing the city any good. <clears throat> also on the acronyms that you use on this uh, agenda, <clears throat> it's very confusing. So you should have somewhere on there and list what the acronyms stand for because here you have a CSA3 H2, and in the closed session there is no CSA3. So it's a bit confusing when uh, people that's not familiar with this council meeting on what to speak on. And also uh, on CI1, uh, it's already within the law when you sign the contracts. The problem has been there's no enforcement. And with that, uh, you should have some kind of enforcement criteria. And if, in fact, you are in violation, then the, the uh, work should cease until it's corrected and then a fine should be imposed on whoever the contractor is. And then it should be duly noted that when they submit contracts for the city, they will no longer be eligible for a period of time. <laughs> but after all, they do bid based on prevailing wages. So here again, if you don't pay it, it's just pocket money for the contract. And if it's union uh, scale, then it should be union workers. It's a violation of federal law as well as uh, state law. <clears throat> so that was a given. That, that's just never been enforced. And here again, uh, on payment of the bills, I would like for you to revisit that red light uh, situation because that's highway robbery, any way you slice it. And most states, I mean most cities, have dismissed it where they don't even uh, enforce the cameras, they've taken them out. Okay. Plus it's a cost to the city. Thank you, Mr. Matthew. Good evening, council members. My name is Diane Sombrano. I'm going to start with setting the public hearing. Isn't it interesting, as I predicted when you went with the 2 o'clock meetings, significant stuff will happen there. Oh, <coughs> wait, that would be after we throw out the union and bring in the people in wheelchairs? Huh. Oh, by the way, thank you for pointing out that seniors forget things. Let's see. No, my mom who signed that isn't in the dementia ward of the place that the seniors came from. So she lives in her house. I'm going to address uh, DR1 and its relationship to the other sound insulation things, item number four. You know, um, it's kind of funny that we're thinking about doing this now 
because that's what we should have done way back when, and then we wouldn't have to delay DR5. Let me see. We wiped out 46 properties and turned them into tumbleweed fields because they were multi-house units and didn't meet the needs for single-family homes when we wiped them out for noise incompatibility with LAWA. And now we're thinking about doing duplexes, triplexes, and fourplexes when we haven't taken care of the single-family homes. Now, I'm not on the contours, but it, so it won't affect me. But the people who will be newly impacted if, in fact, oh, by the way, it is the city of Los Angeles. I know, there was confusion at, the, at that candidates forum I went to. Apparently, all four candidates thought it's the FAA who controls the airport. No, it's the city of Los Angeles who is considering moving the north runway 260 feet, which would impact more homes. So um, thank you for some of you who actually know it's the city of Los Angeles and not the FAA, and the others of you who don't bother to go to the airport meetings or the one who says, do what you want to, I trust you. No, I think the residents of this community want someone who's going to protect them, not someone who doesn't know or doesn't bother to show up or, after showing up, says, do what you want to. No, I think we ought to be extending to those impacted, first to single family homes and then to duplexes and then to the triplexes, but certainly not for the advantage of corporations. I don't believe in corporate welfare. Yay, Ra, the end of redevelopment. We can see how well it's worked for us so far. All it's going to do is cost us more. But I guess that's what you're going to do tomorrow, is it? Tomorrow you're going to give the property away. How sweet. Nothing like doing it one day after the crowd is here. for Austin, District 2. I want to speak on DR1, the sound installation. Um, I, might, I might be a fader, but I thought Mike Stevens did all this fighting to get these homes installed for homes. And so, plus, I thought it was a, like a, a court degree, court thing, where you have to go to court to get change any plan when it comes to the airport. I'm sure I'm, I'm, I might have went to the fifth grade, but I know the court should be changing this law not you all sitting up there. Because triplexes, how many we got in Inglewood? I've been trying to find one for like two years. I ain't found a duplex, triplex. Where are they? In the back houses somewhere? They're not in the front. I can't find any. Where are they? You know, this is another way to steal our money as a taxpayer. This is just another way, and your mind already made up. Everybody here see it. Another way is the DR5. You had to steal our money and give it for 27 cents a foot. The MSG, you already know. That's why you're changing it. But you know, you all sit up there like you, Jesus Christ. You're going down. Y'all all going down, <coughs> except for one. But really, I mean, truly, this residence thing, you got your mind made up. And for us, it's work for us. City manager has a lot of things up here. You know, I want to ask you, what happened to one stop? All of a sudden, we got a welfare to work. One stop was welfare to work. Now, all of a sudden, you want to bring in a new company. I guess so when y'all get all these $2 billion that the money you done got from the racetrack to get rid of everybody, then you'll bring in the work, welfare to work and hire the people you want to hire. Oh, that sounds about right. That sounds about right. Nothing you, you ain't had nothing to do with it because it's already been set up. So, Plus, uh, one and two council people, they never get any documents on time. So. They can't argue anything. And uh, Councilwoman Dunlap, you had a nice gathering, sir. I really enjoyed it. And Michael, do something about this LAX thing. If you don't, I will. Good evening, City Council, Mayor, staff. Um, the Industry definition, DR1, of a single family dwelling, you want it to include triplexes, duplexes, why not a hotel? 
If you want to change the definition of the industry's definition of a single family home, uh, you might as well throw a hotel up in there because a triplex, a duplex, a quadplex, I mean, that's not single family. That's not single family. And I can tell by the three that uh, you're going to shake your head yes on this. I just wonder who's controlling you because this is not right. You're not controlling yourselves. And if you are, you care nothing about this community. Nothing. I better not say anything else because I'll lose my temper. Good evening, Mayor, Council Members, Staff. Councilman Stevens wanted me to introduce myself first and then speak briefly when the initiative CI1 comes up. My name's Jeed. I am the Executive Director for the Center for Contract Compliance. And at that time, then I will define what the center is and talked a little bit about the MOU. Thank you. My name is Willie A.G. and I live in the beautiful city of Inglewood. I've, I've got a problem with elected officials. That people that that's elected by Certain amount of people, 115,000 people here. Who are these people supposed to represent? I'm talking about the council. Do you represent the union, or do you represent the 115,000 people in this city? In which item are you talking about, Mr. A.G.? Uh, CI1. Okay, all right, go ahead. Uh, I vote for politicians to represent the cities that they represent, not the unions. Uh, as a former union man myself, we got out and walked the pavement when we ran into a problem that we couldn't solve. I don't think the citizens are paying people to sit up here and represent the union and the city. I think, in my opinion, this CI1 here, if it's passed, I believe that uh, the councilman that introduced it, I don't know who he's working for, the city or the union. Which one? I'm a little confused there. Uh, I want you to work for the city. And uh, I hope it don't pass. I don't know. Uh, I'm I'm really confused. What happened here last week was uncalled for. Oh. This council is not here to represent the union. Didn't represent me when I was walking three o'clock in the morning, uh, campaigning for to organize uh, companies and stuff. Didn't help me then. So I just hope that this council here represent the people that they was elected to represent. Thank you very much. Thank you. The Ola Gardner, District 1. I'm amazed and appalled the way residential sound insulation has taken off in so many different directions. I worked and I walked for sound insulation before anyone else ever thought about it, before anyone else even cared what we tolerated as homeowners in homes with the airplanes flying continuously above our homes. One person organized and became the trailblazers to fight LAX, no expansion. And that was Mike Stevens. But every politician that runs for a seat, they take credit 
for the work that he did. I'm sick and tired of it. I walked many a block. Mike Stevens spent his own money. He had no idea of becoming a council member at that time. Community put him here. And we intend to keep him here as the only person that has a true interest in community and taxpayers. He fought for us to have comfortable homes, sound insulation, to curtail the flights of the airplanes. And now everybody else has changed it around their way, the wrong way. Now apartment buildings, duplexes, triplexes, everything but a single home dwelling is getting the benefits of the comfort of home insulation. And he's made to look like a rebel instead of a hero. He's a community hero for what he did for us to never be forgotten. And after all his struggle and the money was put here, what did this council do? What did you do with it? You threw it away. You couldn't even sign papers for the money to be spent for homeowners. Oh, I'm sorry. What are you going to do next? It would be hard to even guess. But we know three people will be in agreement. They always are and always will be because that's how this council goes down. I want to thank you. Hi, um, I want to speak on ER1 and digital nation, and I want to echo everything my previous speaker spoke on. Uh, in fact, that's how I met my students who I am voting for. And all this propaganda has been put out, and then they took the sign down we had in my cousin's. Ma'am, you have to talk on the agenda. In the last three minutes, you can talk about political things. But. Okay, well, anyway, uh, the sound installation, basically, we're seeing that it started for the homeowners. But um, now, everybody else is going to be able to piggyback on it, which, you know, basically, everybody needs to, because every time airplanes go, my phone cuts off. So, um, basically, I don't know how this council is going to agree or not agree, but as the lady said, it's always three votes. And one day, the people here are going to get tired of the three votes. Thank you. Also, Howard Ely, Second District, uh, DR1. I would like uh, a definition from the city attorney. What is a single person? What is two people, what is three people, what is four people, the difference in our county, one, two, three, four, to make a single family a duplex or a triplex. I'm confused. Oh, but the, I'm confused how we could do that. A single family dwelling. Wow. So single is single, right? One. That's one. Is that one, Mr. City Attorney, is that single is one or single four or single three or? Because uh, if the staff recommends us, why don't we get a new staff that they who could count to one? Because our staff doesn't understand the difference between one and four. And I think we pay them handsomely. And I, I think that we, they, they get good benefits. That's why they don't leave. But how can the staff recommend and we're going to change the definition. And, and as was uh, mentioned earlier, you know, I've been around and Mike came in and talked about 
he was the one who was fighting for the uh, um, residential soundproofing. There was a lot of money that hadn't been uh, uh, it was allocated that we lost over the years. And as the lady says now, we have folk on our council who want to take responsibility of doing something. You didn't do SHIW for years until Mike Stevens started fighting for us. So what I suggest you do is learn how to count to one. Learn how to count to one, and, let, and if the staff is not adequate, we know some people at, at Inglewood High School or Morningside High School who know what a single family home is. Close public comment. Um, Mayor, I, Mayor, can I just inter interrupt just for one second? Yeah. Um, I'm asking if we could pull the minutes for a February 5th because my deputy and myself would never uh, purposely omit anything uh, from the record and we'd like to review the tape again and come back with it on next Tuesday. All right. Thank you so much. Item 1, CSA 3 and H2. Warrant register uh, uh, move uh, to allow payment of the bills. Madam Thank City you. Clerk. Council Member Stevens. Aye. Dunlap. No. Morales. Aye. Franklin. Aye. Mayor Buds. Aye. PH1. PH1. The next scheduled matter is a public hearing to receive input on substantial uh, substantial amendment amendments to fiscal year 2012-15 consolidated plan and the fiscal year 2013 annual action plan relative to entitlement grant funding under the Community Development Block uh, Program and Home Investment Partnership Act Program. Has notice of the hearing been given the time, form, and manners required by law? And do you have the affidavit on file? Notice has been d given and affidavit is on file. Have any communications been received on the matter? No communications have been received. Is there a staff report? Sorry about that. I'm so sorry. <coughs> I'm so sorry. We'll take a recess and take a look at it. Where? Hit what? Right one? Sorry, I didn't touch anything. Testing, testing, testing. Testing, testing. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? All right. Is it on now? Yes. yes. All right. Thank you, Mayor. All right. Ms. Thigman? Good evening, uh, Mayor and Council Members. Oh, we're back on. We're back on. Ms. Thigman? Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. The public hearing this evening is to... Um, have the council receive input and consider a substantial amendment to the consolidated plan and the annual action plan, as well as um, approve a budget amendment for both the community development block grant program funds and the home investment partnership act program funds. During over the last couple of years, the city, <coughs> excuse me, in some cases, the community development block grant, some of the programs underexpend some of the funds during the course of a fiscal year and therefore those funds can be carried into the next fiscal year and reallocated for other eligible projects and programs. Right now the city owns two properties which can be rehabilitated to provide affordable housing opportunities within the city which is in compliance with the consolidated plan. One of the properties was acquired by the former redevelopment agency. That property is located at 101 North Market Street currently an office structure. The, it is recommended that the second floor be rehabilitated to provide for affordable rental housing. That would be using CDBG funds in addition to some home funds. There's currently $640,000 in CDBG funds and $80,000 in home funds that can be reallocated to other eligible activities. 
Additionally, the city owns a single family dwelling at 708 West Beach Avenue. It is a two bedroom, one bath home that could be rehabilitated. The city owns it. The city could choose the, to sell it or to rent it out. That home um, currently does have some rehabilitation that was done to it that allows for wheelchair access. So if the home was rehabilitated for affordable housing, it could be rented out to a, 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 a family which has a family member that would require that kind of access in the home. If the property is rented to a disabled family, rents could be achieved uh, up to $1,400 a month or $17,000 a year. That would be considered home program income <coughs> and would then have to be reutilized for a home eligible activity, which again is affordable housing. <coughs> Additionally, in the CDBG program, um, as of April 30th of this year, the grants manager will be retiring, which will then uh, allow for salary and benefit savings of approximately $78,000 through fiscal year end September 30th, 2013. As a result, there currently is no money in the budget for the CDBG program given the 28% reduction in CDBG allocation from the federal government during this fiscal year for the city to be able to use CDBG funds to pay for printing and mailing the annual brochures and surveys that the city council uh, has allowed or required staff to mail out every year. So we're recommending to budget, amend the budget to take $24,000 of that salary savings and allocate that to printing, publication, and postage in order for the staff to be able to create the annual CDBG brochure and survey and mail it out to every residential address in the city. If that, if that is not um, allocated, either the city would not prepare and send that or that would have to come out of the general fund. That concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Lickman. Are there any persons present that wish to address the council on this matter? <coughs> I believe that Mr. Pig then said that uh, there was a property on Market Street uh, that right that we own that could be developed. Is that correct, ma'am? Market. Now, uh, I, I would uh, suggest that you would not uh, use a, a property on Market Street uh, for uh, housing. We uh, have Market Street for downtown development. Uh, we have. Uh, given away uh, property on Market Street to uh, a pretty good church. Uh, we have uh, uh, given the, you know, properties away that we should have uh, purchased ourselves uh, on Market Street. So I uh, would hope that you would at least uh, shy away from developing housing on Market Street. It seemed to me that we need uh, business on Market Street. Business is going to uh, bring uh, tax dollars here so that uh, we, the residents, could finally uh, feel some relief because uh, the only thing that uh, uh, we get, we as residents here, are more and more taxes. So I would uh, hope that you would not uh, use that property uh, for housing, uh, uh, just like uh, the property on uh, D5 that you're giving away to uh, uh, parking lots, uh, I think it's wrong. Uh, with regard to the CBDG funding too, uh, I, I would that we could uh, talk to the feds about these monies so that they could be allocated throughout the city. Uh, you have certain uh, sections of the city that are eligible for these uh, monies, but uh, I will tell you that uh, and as I have said before, that with regard to uh, uh, handicap access and sidewalks and stuff, uh, all through the first district, uh, if uh, you could talk to maybe some of the, uh, the, the representatives on the, on the federal end and get some of this money where you could use it in other districts other than uh, certain depressed districts, because uh, while the first district is uh, uh, 
a wonderful district for homes. It is wholly depressed, too, if you would uh, uh, go from Van Ness to uh, uh, Crenshaw, even. Uh, there's a lot that needs to be done all through the first district and, and, and downtown, especially. So I would hope that uh, you could uh, begin to allocate these monies in a different way. Thank you. My name is Diane Sombrano, and I always find it baffling that we ran around and purchased properties when we're such poor landlords. Let me see, how many years did we own that lot on 111th Street? And then people from not anywhere near us got to buy them and still had to litigate because the shared driveway and all that junk. Then there's that, what is that, 116th Street that we owned forever, and we didn't really recoup from that. 16th, 14th, I don't remember. Over there next to the freeway. Then there's that one property that will probably never get our money back because we paid the home ownership dues for Ever and Ever in Carlton Square. There's that piece of property, let me see, the list goes on and on, doesn't it? Where are these other two? And then the one in Hawthorne. But these are community development block grant funds. And I can't imagine why we would purchase something so close to downtown. If we were purchasing anything downtown, rather than creating a flower field, we actually should have, with redevelopment money, restored the historic buildings, like the Fox Theater. Then we would have a revenue source, rather than an eyesore in a flower field or an empty lot with weeds. But I absolutely don't believe that you'll do the right thing. It's just an exercise in futility to suggest you do the right thing. Because I think the people need to know kind of, well, how we got to the place that we are today. It's through the actions usually of council members who, well, in the past came here, got an elected office, made some money, and left town. Uh, Gil Matthew, District 4, uh, Mayor and uh, <coughs> City Council. I must remind this council that the direction of this city rests upon your shoulders rather than staff because I'm concerned that you depend whatever staff say it's I, 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 and so on. Now, I'm concerned about the direction that this housing grant money is being spent for because you're not setting the priority of what's needed in this city. Now, what's sorely needed is neighborhood preservation. <coughs> what sorely is needed first time home buyers programs. And you saw the joy on these people that were able to purchase properties simply under the program. Now you're using home funds that you haven't used for that purpose. Now home fund stands for home ownership made easy. Now, how are you making home ownership made easy using funds that goes to rentals and property owners, absentee landlords? It's counterproductive. But it rests on you, and you cannot allow staff to make that decision. And it's been going on and on and on and on for years. Whether it's illegal, no. <coughs> Is it wise? No. Does it do any good for the city? Stabilizing the city? No. But yet and still, I, 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 and so on it. No comment from the council. Staff, recommendation, I, I, I. <clears throat> so it's time for you to start reaching out to your commissions and study these programs. And if you want a viable Inglewood, you have to make these things available to the young, upcoming people. 
Here we have outstanding people. I was surprised to see how many people want to work and have no opportunity. Residents of this city, people who grew up here, they work. Two families are making income enough to afford a house and with some help. That's where the priority is. That's the future of Englewood. Thank you. Ethel Austin, um, on this public hearing thing, you say you want to relocate the block grant uh, funds. You know what, what, what interests me is someone came into the city, visitor, and they said, it's so many empty buildings in Inglewood. Man, it looks like downtown on Wall Street in this city. Why? I said, well, three votes and kill us. Now, I know where this money going. I know what y'all trying to relocate, reallocate, and all this. You ain't got no money. You're trying to change this so you can bring that VFW over there on Nutwood, don't, ain't you? That's what y'all trying to do. But you know it ain't going to work because we done paid to get them out of here. And we know who's behind it. It sure ain't Mike Stevens. He in your district, but it sure ain't you, Mike. So they taking down with money, tax money, to relocate it, they don't, don't have no money. Adobe got a lawsuit on us. 20 million, you're supposed to build a lower income. Where's that? So now they suing us because you can't build it. So now where 100 black men is the VFW, that's somebody trying to sneak them in there. Oh, makes sense, don't it, everybody? Makes sense. We ain't got no money. So all of this is just a front. It's just a front. They sitting up here, no, we don't have no money. $20 million, we could not build a low, affordable income property across the street from a bill of fire first. And we took a ride in a van to see these senior buildings. They were so nice with Dale Richardson. And what happened? A dog come to build the thing, that $20 million, you don't have the money. You're broke. So now how are you going to reallocate this? Oh, I guess y'all think y'all gonna use the county tax money that we pay the county tax to bring the VFW again and let them keep making money on our taxes? Don't you ever, y'all ever get tired of ripping us off? And I'm talking to the entire board. Do y'all ever get tired of ripping us taxpayers off? We are so sick of this. You know, there's only one way to get rid of all of this. It's just one way. Same way they did, baby bell. It's coming. And a few of y'all going, except for one in the middle, right there. Maybe not you. You ain't bad, Morales. You all right. But you know what? The rest of you can't just have your way like that. It's not Christian-like to have that kind of power. And any man, give one man that kind of power is a weasel. A sad weasel. Should have been the Pope. Really, should have been the Pope. That way he'd be in jail for rape. My name is Albert Guzman. Uh, I believe I heard correctly that uh, some of the D CDBG money was uh, underspent. Uh, could it be because uh, one of the restrictions is that uh, you have to be 62 and over to be able to qualify for a CDBG grant? Uh, that's why I keep on hearing every single year. And I, I keep on being told you got to refer to the city council because they're, they're the ones that are responsible for that. So uh, I'm not sure if that's correct. Is the information correct that you've got to be 60, 62 years old? We'll, we'll ask it. When, do you want well, to give us your comments now? We'll try to answer you later. Okay. So uh, that's why I wanted because this is, the, this is the only city that I'm aware of that you get, that the restriction is that you've got to be 62 years old to qualify for a city CDPG. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. My name is Willie A.G. I live in the beautiful city of Inglewood. You show me a city that don't have apartments of businesses anywhere in the United States, and I'd be surprised. And for the people out there that don't know what VFW stand for, 
as veterans of foreign wall, veterans like myself that have fought in walls. <coughs> and for somebody to stand up here and demean the veterans of this city, that's just going overboard. Thank you very much. Good evening, Mayor, Council, Staff. My name is Stuart Bailey, 11th Third District. Uh, if I heard correctly, they said that you would have to sacrifice. They want you to amend the uh, budget for twenty-four thousand dollars so that they can print uh, CDG grant fund surveys. Well, I don't think that's a good idea because most of those surveys wind up in the trash. Like this city, they don't fill them out, and if you do. We have, what, 100,000 people in this city? And that's, in, that's, that's everybody. And if you think about the adults, let's just say 50,000 adults that should be filling out this survey. It's a waste of money because all of that stuff just winds up in the trash. Now, if you come up with a different idea to do the survey besides mailers, we can save some money. It's just logical. But if you want to take 24000 out of the city budget or reallocate, it doesn't make sense for something that nobody's going to use. Look, we don't vote in the city anyway. <laughs> OK? So let's, let's, let's face that reality. Why are we sending out surveys? If you don't vote, you're not going to send out a survey as well. That's my comments. Thank you, Mr. Bailey. I introduced myself earlier as a veteran. I'm also, I heard a gentleman speak to the VFW, which I was a member of a while back. Um, true, it's veterans of foreign wars. Uh, I spoke to this issue before about the uh, veterans' treatment in Inglewood, including the facility over there on Hendry. Uh, we have these, the home over there, you have veterans that live here in those homes, veterans that even live in the community, like me. We can't get our benefits from the Veterans Administration because our city people, and I'm, it's my understanding that Hendry is located in your uh, district, uh, uh, Mr. Morales, and I've spoken to this issue before. There are tons of money out there. Five thousand, approximately five thousand dollars a month for Alfonso, every veteran. Alfonso, huh? are you talking about the public hearing right now? Because I don't, well, think, I don't think you are. Well, he, well, this is ties in with the VFW and the property <laughs> over there. You see, because it's all about funds well, that the city should be getting. No, sir, it doesn't. This would be more more suitable for the end of the meeting. Okay. Thank you. We we'll close public um, close the public hearing. Any council comments, Councilman Stevens? Uh, yes, yes, Ms. Thigpen. Uh, so, um, just so the public will know, you'll be retiring shortly, yes. soon. Yes. Okay. Uh, you know, um, so I've served on the council. Since I've served on the council, we've discussed oftentimes about CDBG block grant funds being utilized <coughs> by uh, the senior citizens and. Uh, Senior citizens who are in need of home repair, roofs, um, copper plumbing for their homes. The, the city once had a program such as that, correct? Yes. Oh, didn't they? Yes, it's coming back next on uh, March 19th also. Okay. So I just would like for the seniors out there to know that there is help on the horizon. Now, in reference to this item that we have here tonight, I'm, I'm a little bit concerned because, of course, this is in my district, and more importantly, I have spoken with developers who are interested in purchasing that entire block. Now, if we rehabilitate this building and we rehabilitate the office and convert them into apartments, then those individuals will have to be relocated because every developer that comes in has this vision of taking that block and retooling it to something of their own vision, which does not necessarily include keeping the, the existing structure. So whom would be responsible for the relocation of these individuals? And would that, in fact, 
deter a developer from developing that <coughs> property? I know that's part of spec that last component is speculation, of course, but have you have has staff actually thought about that? It would have to be relocated. The developer would have to be responsible for that. Okay. So has staff actually thought about the fact that there are people who wish to acquire that entire block where the Fox Theater is? That's the block that we're talking about, correct? That's correct. And these developers that have looked at this property, <coughs> they in fact, their thoughts are is that of course they're going to perhaps they are going to try to work they are going to work within the Fox the confinements of the Fox Theater. But everything else, everything else is going to have um, mixed use housing <laughs> along with um, commercial housing on the bottom, on the lower floor. So now if we're going to take our community development block grant funds and we're going to pour it into this project here only for a developer to come along at a later date and time and demolish it, is that really wise? I defer to the city manager. This was a project that came for, for his directive. The issue um, before us is, um, I can say right now, the, when you talk about individuals that we may need to relocate, currently there are no residents located in that, um, the commercial building that we're looking at talking, converting into apartment units. Currently right now, I believe there are office uh, units up on the second floor which would be converted to apartments. Mm -hmm. um, they would be a small one bedroom or two bedroom apartments okay. um, for affordable housing. Okay. And the city doesn't have the money right now to um, rehabilitate those um, But units. Mr. City Manager, here's my point. Does that really fit into what we have paid consultants, mm -hmm. their vision for what they have suggested to us that we need to do with Market Street? Mm -hmm. And the second question I would like to ask is this, is that could this money be, re be um, reassigned in a different way, perhaps to for foreclosure assistance <coughs> to individuals who, uh, who are at this time facing foreclosure and perhaps only need an uh, advance of maybe $6,000? Uh, and we park it as a silent second at the, in at the rear of their loan. Mm -hmm. Couldn't this money be utilized if a person was in a CDBG block grant area? Couldn't it, be you could it not be used for that? I think if that question has come up before, it? and I'll have um, Pamela Thigman speak to it. But just remember, this is a public hearing for the council to consider the use of excess funds. You didn't, this is one staff recommendation, but there are m a number of other options that you could choose as to how you'd like to spend the excess okay. CDBG and home so funds. So why don't you, would you please tell the public as well as myself <coughs> just exactly, how would we at this point in time, we've, have, we've held the public hearing for this item, of this, yes. How would we, in fact, go about doing what you just described? If, in fact, the public and myself would like to see this money reprogrammed for another, for another use. Tonight, you could give direction to staff in terms of how you'd like to spend these excess funds. That's why we brought it to you, to get your feedback. There's not a requirement that you take an action tonight. These are not funds that okay. will be timed right. out if we don't spend them. Left. Ms. Thigpen, mm -hmm. could you provide us just could you give us about 25 different uh, things that this money could be used for instead of what you have it identified for here? Just off the top of your head. Okay, we're, we're at time right now. Ms. Ms. Thigpen was going to answer, sir. We're at time right now. Ms. Thigpen, answer the question. Yes, there are a variety of um, public works projects, parks and recreation projects. Um, now, public works, would that be streets? Okay. Mm, yes. Okay, that's all. I just, that's all. Come, please continue. Please continue. Streets, sidewalks. Um, there was a request from the Parks and Recreation Director for a security system at one of the libraries, some repairs or renovations to some park facilities. Um, just off the top of my head, some of those kinds of uses. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Councilman Dunlap. Thank you, Ms. Thigpen. Yes, thank you. Um, actually, uh, I'm going to comment on the use of the funds uh, that's in the proposal this evening. Uh, but I would like for this body to consider not necessarily adopting these this evening because as was stated, there's not a timing issue with regard to us losing these funds. That's correct. Um, and so I think uh, it would be in the public's best interest for us to hear some of these other <coughs> alternatives. You did mention that there's going to be a, a home repair assistance program 
that you're bringing up on the 19th, did you say? Correct. Yeah, I, and I'm just saying <coughs> that I think it would benefit all of us to hear some of the alternatives at, <coughs> as to how these funds could be spent. I will comment briefly on what's before us, but I would ask my colleagues to not approve it until we hear, get some more ideas with regard to how this money can be spent. Um, now, with regard, I am going to speak on the 708 West Beach, however, specifically because that's a home uh, that is in uh, District 2. Uh, it's been vacant for a number of years since the uh, homeowner uh, passed away. It's just sitting there, blighted property, and that I'm going to separate out because something has to be done with that. It is a single family home in a residential area. Something has to be done with that. Um, it is partially uh, with disabled access. So I do support it actually being made fully disabled access and renovated um, uh, and actually rented. So that way more families have an opportunity uh, like at some point in time that they can stay there under the affordability uh, restrictions uh, for as long as they wish to be there. But at some point in time, some another family will be able to come in as well. So um, I support definitely, the, well actually, I said I'm going to separate out the 101 North Market because those are viable concerns that were, that were brought up. We might like to hear some other ideas. But uh, 708 West Beach is a single family home in a, sing in a neighborhood that needs to be renovated as blighted. So I would ask my colleagues to, to support doing the 708 uh, West Beach, with the modifications that have been brought forward because that's kind of important. It's just sitting there uh, and we have to do something about it. So I would ask my colleagues to, to do that. Um, with regard to the 101 North Market Street, like I said, I'd like for us not to vote on that tonight. Um, but uh, if indeed sometime down the road, if this body determines to do that, there is, uh, I'm going to say some historical significance with regard to the type of construction in that building. Uh, downstairs would be, of course, some type of retail, uh, mixed use. Um, upstairs, w they were office offices, like dental offices and so forth. And actually, it's very interesting for any of you have an opportunity to go there. Uh, there's, uh, the doors are uh, hardwood framed uh, in, I think, oak and transoms. It's really amazingly good condition for the age. It means it's not been vandalized and it hasn't been painted over. So there's lots of natural wood. It's really quite lovely. So I would hope at some point in time, if we ever do choose to do this, that we bring in an architect that knows how to protect uh, these uh, type of uh, uh, building the, the construction that took place at that period so it's protected not just torn down and just put up all new doors and so forth I, I think that should be done but uh, once again I would ask my colleagues to support the 708 West Beach because that's just a, uh, an abandoned home that needs to be done so I, I would actually move that we <coughs> definitely uh, take care of 708 West Beach so as a separate motion from the other one actually okay, so I'll second that I would like to second thank you Councilman Morales. Thank you. Um, first, in regards to the mixed use on Market Street, obviously that's the best thing for Market Street way to go. I mean, we've seen it done in San Diego, down on Fifth Street. We've seen it done in, in areas like Santa Monica and downtown Los Angeles. I mean, that's just the way downtown needs to move. Uh, we, if we have to do it one piece at a time, we will. Uh, the, even if someone comes in and buys the entire block, what's going to happen is we're going to get our value back then so that's what happens you you buy a property you fix it up uh you sell it so that's not the big worry right now what we have is some excess funds we need to figure out what to do with them just briefly just like to mention that a cdbg funds are funds that come from the federal government based on how many areas are eligible here in our city okay there there are areas that are deprived financially seen as economically deprived so the federal government recognizes that and sends us a specific amount of funds uh, to help us improve areas such as this. In cities like ours, since budgets are so limited, what ends up happening is that we, ended up, we end up using it for stuff that we should be able to accommodate with our general fund, but we can't afford. We do sidewalks, we do streets, we do certain things like that in areas where, where it's eligible. Now this is important because you, you we, we get this, this kind of presentation and, and you know, some of us like to make people feel we could just do anything. You know, it would be unfair not to represent the areas that, that are eligible for these funds. These are funds that I can tell you that in my area there's specific need uh, in terms of getting some alleys redone, getting some streets done immediately. 
immediately. And these are things we've been piecemealing every year. I've been arguing for CDBG funds every year, and every year we've gotten a certain number of streets. We get an alley every now and then because it's so expensive. Here we have excess funds. I can tell you that, that and excuse me for speaking so uh, quickly, but I'm trying to get everything out. Um, I know that District 4 has a, a vast area as well. So uh, I hear that, that uh, uh, many areas in Inglewood ne have need. I agree with that. But the truth is that these funds are designated for certain areas, and we need to establish that here. You know, I can tell you that for me, yeah, these are great ideas, but I wouldn't mind coming back and saying, hey, there's some specific needs in areas that are actually qualified as CDBG areas. I'd like to see how many streets we could get done with these excess funds in my area, as well as areas that qualify, like District 4. Uh, if we could get an alley done, there's still one or two alleys west of Englewood right now uh, that we've been doing it one every so often where I've you know, spoken to public works directors that have accumulated year by year until it's ready to go. Uh, there's still one more I'd like to see done over there. There's some streets right off of there uh, that are in dire uh, need. Those are things that we need to, uh, you know, really look at with these excess funds. You know, so while these are great projects and I'm supportive of the individual projects, you know, uh, I'm open to also, if, if we want to discuss these excess funds, let's talk about them. But let's establish that certain areas just don't qualify for these funds, you know, and, and that would be unfair to do it any other way when we would have no funds if it was not for these economically, these viewed economically deprived areas by the federal government. So uh, I'm open to that. I, I'll wait to hear what uh, my colleagues have to say. Uh, but in regards to opening up uh, those conversations, you know, I'm open to it. But uh, I just wanted to establish that that's where the beginning of the conversation needs to be. Thank you. Councilman Franklin. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, I did receive this packet on over the weekend to then respond to the staff's recommendation, and we get that on a regular basis. The question I raise, uh, and I like uh, all the colleagues' comments, specifically on the fact of the comments that came from District 1 with reference to the fact of trying to have a mixed-use concept on our dime. That was my concern. Um, I clearly, we have talked repeatedly about having a artist living, housing, uh, working component, which is ideal. I think we have a location. I would rather for us in that area consider a public-private partnership to see if something can be intertwined to see if that would be doable. Um, I repeatedly have met with the city manager and the public works director regarding the needs uh, and the will of the community in District 4 that fall under CDBG. And that if, since these funds are available, I echo those same sentiments, particularly whether it's ADA curb shavings, uh, the, the threat about speed humps that's uh, in, the, in the area, um, and any other type of improvements of that nature. Uh, the alley that, that is still in the Darby <coughs> Dixon area still may need to be addressed, uh, or more importantly, we may actually have the homes that, that you're currently funding that may be inadequate uh, on sufficient funding to complete projects. I also want to stress the, uh, the comment you raised regarding the 101 Market Street, Street project. Even your own uh, recommendations, you have a exposure of additional uh, costs that have not completely been identified when you talked about making a mixed use with a housing on top and a retail at the bottom that you said that you did not include structure retrofitting or the mitigation of hazardous <coughs> waste as part of the cost. But at the same time, you did talk about salary savings. And I have to tell you, I frown on salary savings when it comes to the point of, of losing the, the um, institutional knowledge that goes with that person. Uh, and if there's ways that we can maintain that, uh, obviously uh, that would be doable. And I heard my colleague mention about someone leaving. Uh, I understand you gotta go, you gotta go, but more importantly, make sure you have someone trained that's able to fill your shoes. Uh, I do recommend, however, that uh, this needs to be vetted again. Uh, 
Uh, I clearly would ask staff to uh, let us work together uh, as council to give you our wish list and, and we can turn it around in the next couple of council meetings to identify this is what we would like to see it done or have the options of seeing it done and let it vet it up here and the public comments about what would be more uh, attainable for us to have a, a lucrative transition that it'll be a win-win for everyone. On that note, thank you. Ms. Thigman, I think the uh, projects are, are very appealing and, and they are well thought out. But um, in this community, uh, we have a significant issue with the repair of the infrastructure. And it's my belief if the roads were well maintained, our sewers and pipes are now being replaced and rehabilitated, and that we attract development to our city, that these type of projects actually will occur with private investment. But equally important, we should know what our options are to take care of the basics. All we hear every night, every weekend and out, our streets need to be repaired. So we're going to vote on the other motion, but my recommendation is going to be that we come back, look how much we could do for the basics in CDBG areas, and then we could make some prudent choices as to how we proceed. But anyway, there's a motion on the floor. Mayor, before you, this is already, I'd like to just provide some additional information that I ne neglected to talk about earlier. And that is, just to provide you some background, the, one of the reasons why we wanted to move forward and make this recommendation is that, as you've heard, CDBG funds are significantly being reduced every year. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have more challenges in the coming year to try and deal with those CDBG um, projects like streets and sidewalks and whatever else um, it, um, the CBG funds can be used for. This was an opportunity for us to, for the city, to generate additional CDBG funds that could be, in turn, you know, on an ongoing annual basis, supplement what we get in new CBG funds. So when we rent these units out for, you know, uh, to low-income families, that rental income comes back to the city to be put back into programs to do the um, alleys and streets and all these other things. So it was, it was a way to mitigate the dwindling funds that we're going to have in coming years. Other than that, you use this money once and it's gone and, mm -hmm. you know, we can do the other things, but if we use it for this purpose, it can be used to generate additional revenue to do the things that all the council members have mentioned are up here today. Okay. Well, first there was a motion of the Well, I have, I have a comment, Mr. Mayor. Just well, excuse me. We've all spoken. Well, no, Ms. Barry. You didn't speak to the motion. I didn't speak to the motion. All right, please. Ms. Ms. Thigpen, are any um, the eighty thousand dollars here that's identified in the document? Home program unexpended funding in the amount of eighty thousand dollars is available from the unallocated Chodo funds in account number two two one zero three zero three zero five eight. Now, are those unrestricted funds? No, those are home funds, which can only be used for affordable housing. Okay, they can only be used for affordable housing, but can they be used anywhere in the city? Or is it restricted to a CDBG block grant area? Home funds can be used anywhere in the city. It, it's specific to the income and the value of the home. Okay. So, um, Ms. Thigpen, with that understood that this $80,000, this component right here, this is actually home funds and not actually <coughs> community development block grant <coughs> funds. Now, of the $640,000 that's listed here, mm -hmm. how much of that is unrestricted? Well, they're all, all, this all rest has certain restrictions, but the 640000 is community development block grant funds okay, specifically. But my understanding is, is that when we're dealing with CDBG, there's a 30%, there's a 30%, I believe it is, that where you can spend it pretty much anywhere outside of CDBG block grant areas. Isn't that correct? With CDBG, if you're using it outside of, of a block grant area, you're using it to specifically um, benefit an individual or a household, and then the income limitations come to play. Right. But you have a threshold limit of 30 of thirty percent of the total package, correct? I don't understand your question. 30%. Meaning that if you, let's take it around numbers, if you have $100,000, $30,000 of it, you do not have to spend inside of a restricted CDBG block grant area. No. The regulations related to CDBG identify benefiting low to moderate income people. 
So you would need to use 70% of your funds specifically to benefit low to moderate income persons or households. Right, 70%. Right, now the remaining 30%, where can you spend that at? You can spend it for CDBG eligible type of activity, so it's not unrestricted. Okay, the CDBG, but it does not have to be spent inside of the CDBG block grant area. <coughs> it, we're kind of mixing apples and oranges. It's really difficult to explain. Not really. But as long as you're meeting the threshold, even if it's outside of, we have a CDBG block grant map for those of you who do not know. And what's, the, what's at issue here is this, is that District 1, the new census data, do you, um, you've reviewed the cens new census data, correct? Yes, we have. It was and have you in the incorporated plan. that into your CDBG block grant map? The HUD has not done that yet. Okay, that's my point. So the See, ladies and gentlemen, in District 1, the, under the old map, a large majority of District 1 is not eligible for CDBG, but because the new census count has not been included with the HUD. By HUD. By HUD. You really do not qualify for this money. Now, Ms. Thigpen, why hasn't that information been submitted to HUD? It's not that it hasn't been submitted. HUD, on a national level, mm -hmm. has not been able to take the inf census information from, from the American Community Survey and consolidated that data into their uh, system and created new census block groups throughout the country. Okay. The point is, is this, is that, let's say for instance the avenues, that is not CDBG block grant eligible. Although I have a large number of seniors in the avenues of my district, District 1, they do qualify. The question then becomes, the $80,000 the 80, that could be used for roof repair, new copper plumbing for these residents' homes, who, are in, who do income qualify for this, who are within the threshold. What I would like to uh, suggest, so I'm going to uh, piggyback on your motion here, Ms. Dunlap. Um, what I would like to suggest to my colleagues is that we actually remove that 80, th well, we'll, dis we'll deal with the $80,000 component at a later time. But I just wanted you to go on record, Ms. Thinkpin, is this, is that the $80,000 component here can pretty much, as long as it's only income restricted, correct? The Chodo. For home funds, you have both your income restriction and the value of the home. Now remember, Ms. Dunlap wants, is recommending that you rehabilitate 708 Beach. That is going to be using some of that $80,000 in home funds. Home funds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. But is 87 North Beach in a CDBG block grant zone? It is not, but it will be used to rent to an income eligible household once it's completed. Okay, so the property on beach is not inside the CDBG block grant map? I think it is. It is inside the map. Yeah. And that's it my may point. Be, but because is of that home funds, we have it's an the, it's the household income. We, see, the, home, the property is inside the CDBG block grant zone. And that's my point, is that there's an unbalance here for District 1. District 1 does not receive its fair share. When we can utilize 30% of the money for my district, here. but we do not do it, that's unfair. Because I have residents who do qualify, a large percentage of retirees who have paid the taxes, who have done everything they're supposed to do, but yet they never have an opportunity to participate. So colleagues, I'm just bringing this to your attention. So when this money comes back up before us, Mr. Councilman Franklin, Councilman Morales, I recognize that your districts are largely CDBG block grant areas. But for years and years and years, your districts have benefited from CDBG, while District 1 has languished and have not, has not actually been able to participate okay. as fully as your districts are. Okay. So I'm just, I'm just bringing it to your attention, because at a later date and time, these dollars are going to come back here before us. Okay. And so well, I just want to bring that to everyone's attention. We're at time. Public comment. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, okay. Councilman Morales. Thank you. And ex um, Excuse me, with all due respect, he's already spoken to the motion. No, he has not. Actually, he spoke to the public hearing. He hasn't spoken to the motion. Yeah. He spoke during the public he, he had his public hearing five minutes. Now he's speaking to the motion. Is that okay? Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, okay. There's a belief, when, when you look at it in a way that CDBG funds have been getting spent in, in uh, qualified areas, you tend to think, okay, they're getting all the money. But actually, that's not true. Like I said, in a city like ours,
when a public works uh, department has a specific amount of funds to do sidewalks, they recognize that CDBG funds will be used in qualified areas, so they divide the rest of the money equally everywhere else to balance out the city. So while people believe that some areas have been benefiting for a long time, it's just not true. It's just that the city has learned to leverage those CDBG bonds for a very long time, and that's what's happening. But aside from that, um, in regards to uh, uh, establishing that you can use 30% elsewhere, that's actually not accurate either, Ms. Dickpen, because you would need to uh, prove up that the people using whatever was uh, uh, done with the money uh, are qualified people based on uh, their economic uh, level. So that's exactly why we couldn't do certain parks because we could not stand at the gate and check people's tax forms every time they wanted to use it. That's exactly why we couldn't use it originally up on some of the park areas. So those are things that while the language speaks to the possibility are just technically and logistically I impossible for the city of us to do. So it, those are things that I just wanted to comment on, but uh, for now, I'll tell you that uh, at this point, based on all the, the conversations I'd have, I'd actually like to see this item come back with some of the things we mentioned. I heard what Mr. Field said, uh, you know, looking at how the long distance, you'd have to fix up the property, then rent it out, then collect a certain amount of funds. You know, it may be difficult to collect that kind of, uh, establish those kind of fixtures. So. That's why I'd like to see it come back. Councilman Frank? Uh, we vetted it up. I'm ready to vote. All right. Uh, Madam City Clerk. Actually, Mayor, I would like uh, Ms. Thigpen reiterated, but I think it somehow got lost here in the translation. Um, the property 101 Art Market Street was going to be using CDBG uh, funds. Uh, the property on 708 Beach was home funds, of which she stated very clearly this money can only be used for affordable housing. Correct. And this is a home that's sitting in blighted condition. The owner uh, was deceased a number of years ago. The city owns it. It cannot stand in the condition it's in. It's not good for the neighborhood. It's in a CDBG eligible area, even though it's not, that's not a requirement. And these are home funds. These funds cannot be used for any of the purposes that have been discussed here. They cannot be used for streets, alleys, sidewalks, uh, park cameras. It can't be used for any of those things. It's strictly housing rehab for affordable housing. I want to make that clear, and that's all we're voting on is the one item, not the item that had funds that could be used for other things. We're all going to be taking a look at some of those other alternatives. This particular project is merely a blighted home owned by the city uh, that we can use home funds, strictly rehab affordable housing to take care of that property. It needs to be done right away. It's been sitting for several years now. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Madam, Madam City Clerk, would you read the motion? Well, um, the motion was to approve, uh, is it 708 Beach and hold over Market Street? Right, well the motion then would, I split the, mo I split the item that was before us, it's just to use the home rehabilitation uh, funds to uh, rehabilitate the 708 West Beach Avenue property as outlined in the staff All report. Right. Okay, Madam City Clerk, would you call the roll? Yes, Council Member Stevens. I'm sorry, I'd like a clarity on this. In, in regards to the actual funds, are we saying that only the home only funds the home are being The proposal, right that's what the proposal the is before us. Only it's, the home funds, right? That's so correct, that's what the staff report CDBG says. will be coming back. Okay. Okay. CDBG has nothing to do with okay, this. I can go with that. All right, yeah. Madam City oh, Clerk. Council just Member. for an issue of clarity, Ms. Thigpen. <laughs> Ms. Thigpen, is Beach inside the CDBG block grant map zone? And if so, wouldn't it be eligible for for a component for a portion of those CDBG block grant funds rather than usually the what, what home gonna, funds? What we're going to do, uh, I'm, I'm going to mistake and please hold you. We're going to vote on the motion. Well, we're just looking for a little clarity here well, well, on the well, money. Act actually, we're very okay. clear. Thank we're you. voting on using the home funds for the, for the property. But is the property we're, we're, eligible for it, the CDBG it, block grant funds? We're so. not going to use CDBG block grant funds in but this motion. But could we? But could we? In this motion, but there's a motion on the floor. We're not going to do that in this motion. So we're going to dispose of this motion and then we're going to move on. Madam City Clerk. Council Member Stevens. No. Dunlap. Aye. Morales. Aye. Franklin. Aye. Mayor Butts. Aye. Thank you. Consent calendar items two, three, and four. So moved. No. Second. No, take two was pulled. Oh, two was pulled. Oh, two pulled. Excuse me. 
items three and four. Second. Madam City Clerk. Uh, I want to pull item four. Item three, Madam City Clerk. Um, Franklin was second. Um, Council Member Stevens. Council Member Stevens. Aye. Thank you. Dunlap. Aye. Morales. Aye. Franklin. Aye. Mayor Butts. Aye. Item four. Item number four is a staff report recommending award of a contract for residential sound installation program phase nine, group 20, per bid number CB 11 16. Move items one through six. Second. Did you have questions or did you want to staff, staff report? Staff report. That includes the information on the rejected bid. Good evening, um, Mr. Mayor, um, members of the City Council. Um, before you tonight is a uh, award of contract for Group 9.20 uh, um, in the amount of uh, $1.335 million uh, with an additional uh, uh, amendment to the budget to appropriate funds for uh, construction management services. Uh, we have had uh, a number of bids um, that have undergone challenges by other contractors uh, due to insufficient documentation. In this case, uh, as you note in the staff report, the bid uh, actually was made public uh, in the prior year, in, I believe it was November 2011. There was a subsequent challenge. We referred the matter to the city attorney. Uh, we rendered a decision in August to award the contract and reject the bids, and we've been awaiting direction to uh, appropriate these funds to award this specific contract. Um, the group consists of about 47 units, uh, only 14 of which are single-family homes. Uh, six of them are within a, uh, a duplex uh, situation. Um, there's uh, ample uh, number of groups such as this. Uh, we're prepared to award uh, additional uh, six more contracts in the next uh, few weeks to proceed with, uh, to achieve our goals, um, which have been um, articulated uh, prior to would you like me to start all over again? <laughs> okay. Go ahead. So um, in large measure, the groups that we are prepared to award uh, will help us achieve uh, uh, nearly 1,000 units this uh, calendar year. And uh, we uh, intend to uh, bring forward additional groups such as this to uh, award and proceed with our schedule. Thank you. Yeah, I wanted you to include the uh, why this, the bid was rejected. Uh, if, uh, I if, actually, if, if I don't I, want my time started. I asked for that to be part of the staff report. And, and yes, ma'am, I did. I did include that, and unfortunately, my microphone was off. And so, uh, to reiterate, uh, we've had several uh, bids Mr. that Mark, were. Stop the clock. It's not. It's on his time. It's part of the staff report. Uh, this is a, a reiteration of my answer that I gave uh, in my verbal report. Um, if essentially, the uh, bid went out uh, to the public. Uh, for contractors to uh, render a bid in uh, the prior year, November 2011. Uh, we received a challenge based on insufficient documentation from one, uh, one or more of the, the vendors. Uh, we referred the matter to our city attorney and we made a decision to uh, uh, reject the lowest bid and go with the, uh, the uh, next responsible bidder. Um, and we made that decision sometime in August. Uh, we've been uh, uh, prepared to make uh, contract awards over the last uh, six months for seven additional uh, contracts. And this is this, I believe you uh, awarded one in January. This is the second one of those, those seven. Thank you. Well, what specifically caused the low bidder to be rejected? Actually, there are um, a number of uh, documents that uh, go into uh, a bid, um, not the least of which are evidence of proper licensure for subcontractors. Um, we've re reject bids on the basis of no, but incomplete. What was this bid specifically rejected? That their subcontractors did not have proper licenses? There was a specific challenge to the lowest responsible bidder. Based on what? The contractor who challenged, mm -hmm. in making a reference to the city attorney, we determined that the lowest bidder was non-responsive. No, but based on what? That their bid was non-responsive. It was in either incomplete or that their contract, subcontract, did not provide adequate documentation. Okay, well, I, actually, I'd like to know specifically why. Meaning, did a subcontractor, mm -hmm. was there not a sufficient 
license information regarding that person? Or what, was there a missing document? I would like to know specifically why <coughs> we, we determined to reject the lowest bidder. Uh, if you don't have it here this evening, just bring, get it, I'd like to know tomorrow. I'm we'll we'll, re we'll refer the, the matter to uh, through the city manager's office and provide that information for you. I'm not, I'm not finished. Uh, uh, actually, uh, Mr. Fields, uh, speaking of that, uh, going to the city manager's office with this document, uh, I think it was in August, Mr. Calzada, I requested some documents uh, regarding our correspondence with LAWA, if you recall, and you sent them to the city manager's office, and I've never received them, Mr. Fields, and at a council meeting, I actually brought that up. I said, Mr. Fields, I, would, I asked for the correspondence between the city of Inglewood and LAWA going back to, it was at least August, if not July. I, I'm sure you recall because you provided them to, to Mr. Fields. I've never received them. So things going to your office, it, it might as well be dropping into a hole because I don't get them, specifically when it relates to LAWA on airport issues. So he says he's going to get that information. I hope I get it timely. Plus, I would like uh, the letters, the correspondence from LAWA that he sent to you months and months and months ago, like I say, either July or August, I'd like to have those documents. Uh, I, I don't Public recall the reference uh, material that you're referring to. Yeah, well, you stated here that you provided them, and you told me uh, that you had, you sent them to Mr. Fields. Uh, it was uh, requested actually in a closed session, but they were public documents and they were sent to you. So I would like to have them. Can you clarify what those documents are? Well, you know what? I'll like make it Kelsey very general. All the right. correspondence between Lawa and the City of Inglewood uh, for 2012. Because a lot of correspondence took place. I've not seen it. I want to see those letters so I can make uh, my own judgment call with regard to the activities that are going on, specifically when it relates to the very critical program of, of the, our residential sound insulation. We have lost $36 million over the last few years, and I think every member of this body deserves to have accurate information, and definitely the correspondence coming from LAWA. We shouldn't be getting a staff synopsis of what was in those letters. I want to see the letters. Uh, getting back to this particular item, it says here, uh, approve RSI staff salaries and benefits in the amount of 200000 I don't recall seeing that type of language in the past, where we actually paid salaries listed on the agenda. Is this something new or I just didn't maybe notice? No, uh, you're quite accurate in pointing this out. Um, prior to October 2012, uh, in years past, we had budgeted and you had appropriated mm -hmm. um, in subsequent uh, budget years uh, the amount for construction management. In effect, we were job costing uh, mm -hmm. personnel salaries to those project costs. At my direction, this, up, this last budget was prepared to not include that job costing due to uh, our inability to track that job costing accurately. Um, in January of this year, we received direction from the assistant city manager and the chief financial officer to now include um, job costing. So you will see in, in those contracts that we had not appropriated them in the budget um, as placeholders, you will see appropriately uh, additional funds to support uh, payroll and that would be in addition to what may have already been in the budget? It, uh, as indicated in, in this budget resolution, yes, it would be, yes. All right. Thank you, Mr. Calzada. Very welcome. City Clerk. Council Member Stevens. Oh, I'm sorry, I have my, I'd like to get yeah. Good evening. Mr. Calzada. Yes, sir. Well, um, you'll be retiring this week. As of uh, noon on Friday, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. well, I'd just like to go on record to say that um, Mr. Calzada, um, when I first started, when I first came on board, I was under the impression that you were totally responsible for the languishing of our RSI department. I have since learned that you were not. It was those individuals who were above you. And you were basically, in my opinion, just being a good soldier, doing what you were asked to do by those assistant and city managers and above all council members on this body that are listed in the audit report. Now, Mr. Kelzad, I want to ask you a question. What I remember was was that it used to cost anywhere about oh, about fifty-five to sixty thousand dollars to sound insulate a home in Inglewood. Correct? Uh, two years ago. That's the incorrect. No. How much did it cost? Uh, we had averaged uh, at the height prior to two thousand eight approximately twenty-eight thousand. Twenty-eight thousand. Um, it's funny. I have documents that show that it's fifty-five thousand, sixty thousand per household. Are you referring to the LAWA doc, uh, audit from yes, years right. years ago? That's correct. Yes. Yeah, I, I don't. So I think that I think their figures are inaccurate. 
So if you believe their figures are inaccurate? Correct. But they're the auditor. Uh, that was not based on an audit. That was based on their records of the amount of grants that they had uh, issued to the city um, and did not account for the number of units that we had actually produced. Okay, Ms. Galzada. My point is, is that here we're showing here very clearly that the average cost per unit is now $25,830. That's correct. Now, if LAWA is correct, and we were spending between fifty-five dollars and $60,000 per unit. And s I stipulated that as incorrect. And yeah. your belief, you believe that, you believe that they're inaccurate. Correct. Okay. If that is correct, then why did we not submit our grant reports timely? The four year, how many years was that? Was that three or was that four? That was three years. It was based on the fact that we did not have single audits produced for those three years. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with your prior question. Okay. Well, yes, it does, because in those audit reports, we have to account for where the, where, what units we actually sound insulated, correct? Uh, in fact, I think it speaks to how the city manages its grants, not to the actual production of the units. Well, managing its grants is the same as which units are actually sound insulated, right? Not necessarily. How you spend the money is... W the single audit, the purpose of the single audit is not to, to render a program management or assessment of the operations of uh, this particular unit. So do you feel that Mr. Weinberg's audit was accurate, Mr. Calzada? I do not. You do not? You do not feel that Mr. Weinberg's audit was, was accurate? I do not. Really? Okay. All right. Well, Mr. Calzada, once again, I know you'll be retiring this, uh, this week. I wish you well. Thank you, sir. Okay. And um, I believe Mr. Audit, Mr. Uh, Weinberg's audit is accurate based upon the information that is substantiated by LAX, but we will not go into that because it has not been yet released to the public. Is that correct, Mr. Calzada? I do not know. You do not know? Mr. Fields, when will we be releasing that audit to the public? <coughs> That was, that was actually requested here on the dais right. in the public setting, right. at a public right. uh, meeting. There are, there are confidential, um, there's confidential information in that document, and, and I believe that I'd have to consult with the attorney before it was released to make, sure th to make sure that the information is not... I didn't see anything right. in there that was confidential, well, other than where the money right. went. Well, that's why when you originally asked for it to be made public, it was referred to the city attorney's office and we made that decision at that time. Mr. City Attorney, do you feel that document is confidential? And it's public audit. It's a public audit. Ask I'm for not exactly sure exactly which document you're referring the, to. The audit report um, prepared by Mr. Weinberg that identifies just what's been going on with the sound installation fund program, where the money went, what went on. If you're referring to the document that was produced uh, in a closed session, yes, it is confidential. Well, no, it was a requested here in a public setting for the public to know. It doesn't matter. It was prepared, and it is a confidential document. It remains that way at this point in time. And why is that? Because it just simply shows where the money went. That's all it shows. Well, why? you and I must be talking about two different documents. Uh, so outside this meeting, you, you need to tell me or well, show the me same what document we're talking about. The document it just I saw refers to a number of personnel matters. Well, it identifies a number of people. Okay. But, Mr. Calzada? Yes, sir. Best wishes, sir. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Council Morales? Uh, there's a motion on the floor. I'm ready. Madam City Clerk? Council Members Stevens? Aye. Dunlap? Aye. Morales? Aye. Franklin? Aye. Mayor Butts? Aye. Uh, SPH, SPH1? Staff report requesting a public hearing be set to consider adopting the Tax Equity and Fiscal uh, Responsibility Act resolution and approve the issuance of a tax exempt revenue bond by the California Statewide Development Authority to assist in financing or refinancing the acquisition, rehabilitation, improvement, and equipping an affordable senior rental housing facility for the uh, Eucalyptus Park Apartments located at 811 North Eucalyptus Avenue, Inglewood, California. Set the public hearing for April 9th, I believe it is, 2013 at 2 p.m. I, I believe Ms. Thigpen asked for it to be the 9th. Uh, yeah, that's right. She did for the email. April 9th. It's, yeah, we need to change that to April 9th. Uh, 
All right, DR1. Uh, staff report recommending adoption and approval of the industry definition of a single family dwelling to include duplex, triplex, and fourplexes. Staff report. Mr. Sparsa, Mr. Atwell. <coughs> Welcome, Mr. It's upside down. Welcome, Mr. Sparza. Uh, Mr. Mayor, point of order. Because I'm an owner of a fourplex and the city of Inglewood, and because also not only am I an owner, but because I've rescinded any noise mitigation funding for my residence until everyone else in Inglewood mm -hmm. receives theirs, I'm going to excuse myself from the dais while this goes on. Because I do not want it to be that you know there was some type of conflict. Actually, if you if you rescinded yourself from the program, there wouldn't be. But go ahead. Well, if no, you, I you can excuse yourself. Go ahead, Mr. Sparza. Good evening. Good evening, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of the City Council. David Esparza, Assistant City Manager, Chief Financial Officer. I'm here to report on uh, DR uh, one, uh, which is a request for a policy change or an interpretation on the use of the definition of a single family dwelling. Um, I guess I am the one guilty for not being able to count to one, you know, so I, uh, I apologize for that. Uh, the issue that, uh, you know, really that is the point of this discussion is that during an earlier council meeting when the council decided to limit the definition of a single family dwelling, it really created a conflict with its other goal of achieving a thousand units of insulation in 2013. And, and it's because of that conflict that I'm, I'm coming back in order to discuss the policy issue about what that definition do, means, you know, in the work of the uh, residential sound insulation program. So on this uh, chart that you can see, and I apologize because I, I actually after thinking about this, we should have had it projected up on the screen so it would be much larger. But the, the point is fairly simple. On this uh, uh, chart or map, the yellow uh, squares that you see there are single family units, you know, as defined by uh, the council that a single family unit is in fact a, a detached single family structure, all right? The, the problem that has arisen is that if we restrict the, the uh, number of single family homes, you know, for insulation purposes, then we will, you know, eliminate a, a very significant portion of the, uh, of the homes that we have currently in the pipeline that have, that have been prepared, designed, and readied for construction. And this particular map here shows that those yellow squares, which are the single family, there's 276, or that constitutes 29% of the number here of 953. The, the purple squares, which represent the multi, you know, multiple family units, uh, constitute 677. So again, if the goal is to achieve a thousand homes of insulation in 2013. If we restrict the interpretation as, you know, the, the council uh, discussed, then we will, you know, really hinder ourselves in the accomplishment of that goal in 2013 and quite possibly in 2014. Um, I, I, I want to break it down into a sense that if we want to understand as to why the definition was changed. You did a good job of explaining that. The bottom line is I think that the public as well as most of us up here, uh, the more important thing is that the, the owner-occupied homes, whether they be attached or detached, are at the top of the list. And here you're telling me that 
under the current definition, we're restricting ourselves because under that scenario, there's a certain number of owner-occupied homeowners that would be left out. Correct. And so uh, now that you've explained it, it makes complete sense. Of course, we don't want to do that. You know, it, everything has some sort of collateral kind of uh, uh, changes and, and impacts. Right. Okay. But here, uh, by doing it, we're putting ourselves in a better position uh, to help all of the homeowners who are currently occupying homes that don't fit the uh, exact that currently exists. That's correct. That's correct. So yeah, I mean, it makes sense, and and it's unfortunate that you know it's being characterized somewhere else, somewhere different. But uh, thank you for your report on that, Councilman Frank. All right, I have a different spin, but um, because there is a sunset for 2015, and these multi-unit complexes is part of this proposed mix. I'm concerned of the square block residents that may not qualify or may not meet the time for the sunset. By identifying the single families as, as we defined it in January, it would then reduce the number of current groupings that staff has been working with up to this time. That, that is correct. And then the moving the step further, then that would then raise the element of it of accelerating the number of single families that live in a single home to meet the definition of completion under the FAA LAWA guidelines of, for the uh, underneath the flight path. That's which then would, if, if I'm correct, then that mm -hmm. would allow then those homes that are at the end of the block or square block we call it would then be able to meet the, or should staff should be able to complete what is needed prior to 2015 so then those homes that residents that clearly are single residents and, and I'll speak for District 4 particularly would then in fact uh, be given be um, uh, eligible for for the discretionary funds yeah you're correct and and the idea that because we would not be delaying and we could get through the the uh, units that currently are have been pushed into the into the pipeline so to speak yes you're absolutely right that by you know continuing on with the current proposed makeup of the uh, of the blocks, you know, because we bid these in groups, and you know, by continuing with the current uh, bid groups, then <clears throat> we have a much better chance of achieving, you know, many more of the single-family homes, you know, that would be, you know, in your uh, discussion. So going a little bit <coughs> further, because um, I have now noticed that a number of ho homes actually have been victimized because of the fact that apartments rental property had in fact benefited by having this res residential sanitation program. It seems like we're, we're going backwards again by now saying, whoops, by the way, we still have residents that do have that duplexes or larger up to four units. And I understand the staff giving us these different examples that they can use, mm -hmm. but I have a bigger problem. And the bigger problem is the meeting the needs of the residents that are being plagued by the sound that are single resident homeowners mm -hmm. that are there for the long haul. And so I'm more concerned of their welfare, of us expediting those that are underneath the flight path that are single resident occupants so we can now embrace those residents that is the square block or the end of block that is right at that cutting edge of the flight path boundary lines that the city didn't establish, FAA and law established, but yet they're victims because they say they hear the same noise as their neighbor, but yet they don't qualify because of this imaginary line. So I, I can't support this proposal uh, because there's too many other single family residents that are saying they should come first mm -hmm. because they are the long term stakeholders. So that's my comment. Uh, Mayor, can I just speak to something real quick? Um, I just want to clarify that 
the reason why we brought this forward and it's an issue before you tonight is because of our goal to do a thousand units. Oh, I'm sorry. Any, let me speak. Okay. Okay. You know, one of the things I want to tell everyone, one, at my town hall meeting this Saturday at 11 a.m. at uh, the living room at 400 East Florence, we're going to um, West Florence. We're going to have a discussion about the town installation program. I've been working with LAWA for a good amount of time now, and the reason that we're talking about doing a thousand homes in the next year is because we've come to an agreement that I'm going to ask the council to bless that will give us access to funds that were thought lost. And the reason we're even talking about these duplexes, triplexes, and fourplexes is that these houses were already designed. And if we don't do them, then that money goes to waste. And two, you have people that actually live in the city underneath the flight path that came to the belief that their homes would be sound insulated and they never will be. So that's kind of a decision we have to make as a council. What I'm encouraged about is that we are going to be able to, we have an ambitious goal of doing a thousand homes this next year and moving on expeditiously after that. And so I would ask that we consider this as a grandfathering so that we don't waste that money that we spent on design. Um, and bear in mind that children do live in these residents that have been designed and I, w I wouldn't want to see the city waste its money. But uh, that's something we need to bear in mind. And we also need to bear in mind that we have a path forward and I'll explain it more fully on Saturday and think about this is a cleanup. And also as it re relates to neighborhood equity, is, which, is what, which is what Councilman Franklin was talking about, because right now we don't do end of the block or squared block or whatever you want to call it, uh, because we're supposed to do all the other homes first that are identified as decibel impacted. But I'm going to recommend, and I recommend it to LAWA going forward, that as we do blocks, if there's an end of the block qualifies, we should do it right then so they don't watch their neighbors have their home sound insulated next door and then they wait <coughs> until the end of the line. So anyway, we'll, we'll talk about these things, but I would ask that my colleagues consider grandfathering these structures that have already been designed so we don't waste the money that's been spent on them. Madam City Clerk. I, I need a motion. Have you finished, Mayor? I have a comment. Yes. Yeah, actually, uh, with regard to this item before us, I don't know, I, did, I didn't hear that we'd have homes here that would never be, uh, I didn't hear anything about homes that would never be, uh, be completed if they were dropped out now based on the fact that they're duplexes and triplexes. Hope everybody notices the clock, please, it's two minutes. Um, it's my understanding that, are you suggesting then that within this year we cannot design enough single family homes? Is, we, that, the, is that the issue? That is correct. You know, what I'm saying is that, you know, based upon the time that's required for the design, well, to basically mm -hmm. get the, the homeowner to engage with the city, to design their home, to put it on a construction uh, timetable. So you we, don't believe we have enough single family homes to fill this gap, correct? Well, globally, yes, we do. No, but within the time frame. Within the time frame, no, we absolutely do all right, not. Well, um, I believe we've been doing the program all wrong all along. I've always been an advocate for the single family, owner occupied single family home first. That's what we should have done when we initiated the program. Uh, the majority never felt that way. And it took us until what, 2013? I mean, it's just terrible. Because all the apartment buildings we did and so forth. But uh, I assume they're all gonna be sound insulated. Um, I do not support homes, as was just mentioned, outside of the noise contour being sound insulated before the, the home's inside, which was just suggested by the chair. I do not support that. I think anyone who's inside the noise contour needs to be completed first. Now, I don't want to change this uh, definition. A single family home needs to be a single family home. Um, and also, I believe that our program takes way too long from the beginning to any kind of completion of design going out to bid. I mean, that, that process is way too long. Other cities 
or like what uh, what ten percent of that time. I mean, it really is unacceptable. You know what we've been uh, our, our time frame. It has to be greatly condensed because uh, South San Francisco, for instance, they used to do uh, four and five hundred homes having an overlap. They eat twenty five hundred homes a year. So uh, I appreciate our goal of a thousand, but. Uh, which may be a lot more than we've done in the past. So I would suggest with regard to this motion that we absolutely do not change this definition. Single family home needs to be a single family home, but because of the fact that these homes have already been designed and are already in the bid packages, to pull them on out would uh, create such delays as to, uh, to be a detriment to the program uh, then I would have to reluctantly say we need to do what's in the program, but I don't want another another home, not another, not even one, a home put into the program that's not a single family home first. A single family home needs to be done first, and actually we had owner occupied as a criteria as well. So I don't know. Uh, I don't want the definition changed at all. So uh, I don't. Who is well, that made the motion? Actually, what I'm, my motion is to grandfather these structures that have been designed to not change the definition and move forward to do only single family homes until they are exhausted and then move on to multiple family dwellings. And, and, and so we would grandfather those that have been designed so we don't waste the money and we don't disenfranchise <laughs> people that believe that they had been in the program, clear up that backlog, and then move forward with single family homes. Yeah. And, and that's actually very, I mean, you know, we, I was listening when, you know, the council had this discussion, and so I absolutely understand the directive and the purpose. And so, you know, that is, you know, a very real pro, uh, possibility and a, and, a, and a direction to give as we get through this backlog and start into fresh, you know, groups to then uh, bundle them for, you know, for design and construction purposes. And so that is, that's a, a very real uh, uh, directive for 2014, but in 2013, I just wanted to make sure that the, you know, the conflict that the council was, uh, you know, was going to be in. Yeah. Is there a second? I, I don't, I don't well, I'll second I'll the motion if there is, but, but actually I, I didn't get to complete my remarks, if I may. All right. uh, and that is just that uh, I think we all understand uh, the problems that have, uh, have occurred with the program. I think everyone here, if you come to the meetings at all or watch them on, uh, on our website, you recognize that we've done a lot of huge buildings, 50, 60 units, many of them apartments, whereby the owners evicted the tenants and raised the rent. So we did not in enhance the quality of life for many of these individuals who lived in apartment buildings because the owners just took it as a bonanza uh, for them, they, they, they got all this free rehab to their building and they just evicted everybody. So those tenants really were the losers and we failed to even monitor that and prevent that from happening. Uh, and that was, uh, once again, our responsibility to make sure that if we spent these federal uh, dollars and, and uh, LAWA dollars and, and so forth on this rehabbing, that uh, we protected the, the tenants, people who are living there, especially in the lower income areas, certain areas of the city. Because they, they're just mass. Every one of them were given eviction notices mm -hmm. out. Then the owners raised the rent. So that happened. It's been discussed. It's not going to happen again. And uh, the fact that we're going to complete these only because we, uh, we have so many to do eventually, and we are going to lose funding at some point in time. So uh, the motion with regard to not change the definition but doing what's in the pipeline and not another single home goes in the pipeline unless it's an owner-occupied single family. When those are completed, then we move on to duplexes, triplexes. Thank you, Mayor. That's the motion. Madam City Clerk. <coughs> Council Members Dunlap. Aye. Morales. Aye. Franklin. Aye. Mayor Butts. Aye. DR2. Staff report recommending approval of the modifications to the agreement with the SBWIB. Move approval. Second. Madam City Clerk. Council Member Stevens. A staff report, please. DR2. Oh, 
And aren't we going to act on DR2 oh, and, and DR4, DR4 at the same time? Uh, oh, no. you want to do no, both? No. Separate. 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 Oh, okay. Separate. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good evening, Mayor, members of Council. My name is Michael Falcom, the Assistant City Manager. And the item before you, DR2, is an approval of a modification to the agreement between the City of Inglewood and the South Bay Workforce Investment Board. On December the 4th, 2012, the Mayor and Council approved uh, an agreement to bring the South Bay WIB back to the City of Inglewood. Uh, since that time, an uh, opportunity uh, to uh, enter into an agreement with the county, which is DR4, which will be discussed next. Required that we bring forth a modification to that agreement to bring both the agreements in line with one another so that the uh, South Bay WIB would be able to provide the services with the city as the administrative entity uh, working directly with the county. So this agreement uh, basically mirrors the agreement that uh, the city will have with the county should it be approved in DR4. And this uh, item needs to come first to allow us to provide those services directly to uh, the, on behalf of. Uh, the county through, as the administrative entity, the South Bay WIB. And there are representatives of the South Bay WIB here if there are specific questions regarding this agreement and modification. Uh, in the absence of the mayor, um, Mr. Stevens, do you want to comment? Well, I just wanted to um, ask Mr. Uh, Fields, DR2, DR4, as Mr. Tushera, Tushera has stated, it's not on the internet. It's not on the um, web. We're doing DR one. It hasn't been put. It hasn't been placed there, and it wasn't all weekend, and it was not in my agenda packet over the weekend. Okay. Right. Okay now. Okay. Looks like you got a third base coach and a first base coach, huh? <laughs> my point is, is that it was DR two and DR four was not in my packet. I was here yesterday. I was here this morning. And this is it. When was it placed on my desk? I think this, after this afternoon. This afternoon? Right. About yes. what time? Noon. Noon. noon time. So noon time. Okay, so noon, so from, from 12 noon. And I went to the dentist today, by the way. So I guess I was, well, really? You know, I you know I, I appreciate the work that the um, that they are attempting to do the South Bay workforce. I appreciate that. And Jan Vogel, uh, I remember when he was a member of staff here in the city of Inglewood, and I have no problem with Mr. Vogel. But I do have a problem with giving information such as this that I'm to digest that is in fine print. And you wish for me to make a decision on it, Mr. Fields. If staff did not have it prepared in a timely manner, then it should have been held over until next week, till the next council meeting. It should not be that I'm given something at 12 noon, and no one even called me to tell me that this was on my desk. So I have an issue with that. You see, I have an issue with that because, see, I'm a working council person. My job is, in the sh is, is going to the residents. I don't ask them necessarily to the ivory tower here. I go to them to hear, hear what their problems are, what their issues are, because their issues are, in fact, out, outside these walls. And so I have an issue with this. So, I, so um, I'll um, see what my colleagues are going to do, but I will not be voting on this. Uh, simply because it was not given to me in a timely manner, and I do not have enough information at this time. Mayor, may I answer the question? Yes, you can. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Stevens, the reason that this item and DR4 were uh, late to be produced was because this I and the reason that it cannot be held over is because the South Bay WIB must enter into this agreement prior to the agreement that the city will enter into with the county, which is DR4 in order for them to continue operations providing the services that they provide to well over a thousand individuals hmm. as part of that grant. We worked basically all weekend long, including uh, yesterday, to get this document completed back and forth uh, with the South Bay WIB in order to accommodate okay, Ms. Falco, the need for you're the still city attorney. Time, so let me just say this to you, Mr. Falco. 
I understand everything that you're saying. I'm sure you could go on for another minute and 32 seconds. But here's my point. You almost sound as though it's my fault. So you, the, that, right. that, that it's my fault that this was not prepared in a timely manner. I recognize the fact that there are many people out here who do not have jobs, many of whom I'm out here trying to help them find jobs. But I do have an issue with staff providing me with this. Now, surely staff knew the timelines. Surely staff knew that there was a timeline restriction on this, that we, that we, were in a, we had a finite timeline that we had to, that we had to prepare this. Why so we worked, issue, that is why so we worked on stop, sir, to try to so get it accommodated. The problem here is that, as often in the city of Inglewood, we do not start in time. Now, who is going to be affected? You say, well, a thousand individuals who are looking for jobs. Do you have their names? No, sir. Many of do it. Okay. So answer your you question, not, sir? No, I'm just, you know, because you're still on my time. And you'll be able to speak for some time. But here's my, here's my point, Mr. Falco. You almost sound as though it's my fault, as though it's council's fault that this was not prepared in a timely manner. And I do not believe that it's my fault. I do not believe that it's my colleague's fault. I believe that it is, in fact, staff's fault. I believe it's city manager's fault. It's not my fault. Of course, I'm aware of what's in who, of the people out of work in my community. Of course I am. And I think it's appalling that we would have a cavalier attitude about it and present it now. Yes, yeah, cavalier. No, sir, it's not. Why would you present this to us at the last moment? Why? Why? 12 noon today. My time is up. Yes, it is. Councilwoman Dunlap? I didn't ask for recognition here. I will. Councilman Franklin? Thank you. Um, in fact, uh, let me reach out to the city manager and the city, city attorney, attorney and say thank you. Because when I had my meetings with you on Monday, the items were agendized but was not in my packet. So I was put on notice that there was, in fact, going to be documentation made available subject to our council, legal council's recommendations. Therefore, I notified my staff, and particularly my council assistant, to make sure that she was here at a certain hour of the day today, and I was on red alert when and if it came in, I was to be notified. I was notified around noon, and yes, I had did my perusal of my packets, as you know, I do my highlights, underlines, and all the other kind of notes with it as well. And so it's critical, and in fact, better than that, I even went, even after talking to the city attorney, city manager, I reached out to the executive director of Workforce Investment Board and say, let's talk, because I need to find out how sensitive this issue is and how it's going to impact this city and this community. And when the dollars came to my attention, about $26 million, it got my attention. And so I gave it my due diligence, and therefore the, the fact of that, and, and I'll give my props now to the city attorney, because he is there to protect our city interests. There were some issues and items that was raised that um, I had read or heard about that raised some concerns to me, as particularly by the city attorney, that may have shifted the liability from the city as opposed to the contractor. These items were addressed, the terms were addressed, particularly when we're engaging with the county to be able to funnel the money. We have identified that Workforce Investment Board will be the administrator, I'm sorry, the contractor will be the administrator. And Mike Falco, you've been given the, the uh, tacit approval of being the good shepherd, and I'm ready to move forward. Thank you, Mayor. Mm -hmm. Want me to go? go ahead, Councilman Morrell. Thank you. Um, this conversation started what well, a well, month, month and a half ago when we actually voted to uh, welcome uh, the South Bay WIB. Uh, the bottom line is it's just a great organization to have here in our city. What we started back at that moment was the process to get them here. Uh, there was some snags and while we received this report today, uh, you know, and, and everybody knows we've had countless conversations about this specific issue, its urgency, and what it means to the city, both with the city manager and city attorney. I commend uh, uh, all of you who have been working with this all week, and I know the city attorney was here uh, every day this weekend. I'm sure Michael, uh, he loves to work, so I'm sure he, he found a way to help out. Uh, but I will say that once it was put together, all of the issues were vetted, all of them. And while uh, on both sides, there was a sense of uh, urgency. Uh, there was conversations to be had, and it took a lot of work to get to this point. The, the, the bottom line is, though, 
that this city is going to win. It's going to win by having these type of services here. Uh, our youth will get an immediate impact. Uh, my understanding from the executive director, uh, and and I actually would like uh, Mayor if he could come up and just share two minutes, and and doesn't have to talk about the process and and what what, what it was about. Just what we will immediately get as a city uh, here in the city of Inglewood. Yeah, of course, yeah. Mayor. I'm very Janice, generous. He's giving you two minutes of his time. Okay, thank you, Mayor and Council Members. Well, immediately, what this will do is. Uh, enable services to continue and so they'll so they'll not be interrupted for many many people that are in the program and staff that are providing the service that's the most immediate um, thing that will take place having the South Bay Workforce Investment Board here uh, uh, working as the lead city to Inglewood will provide lots of benefits we plan to open a teen center here in Inglewood shortly we're going to uh, provide funding, uh, partial funding for the cadets in the police department. We hope to institute a park ranger program as we did in Hawthorne. There's a lot of collateral benefits that take place by the South Bay Workforce Investment Board uh, being administered here in Inglewood. But this particular contract serves uh, temporary assistance to needy families, serves refugee population, and a foster youth program that's just starting as soon as this is approved and the target area of this will be the South Bay, particular Inglewood, through our Inglewood One Stop Center. These funds support the Inglewood One Stop Center. It's not in competition with it, so that funds can continue to flow through the One Stop Center and programs added, like this foster youth program, which we've been chosen to pilot, and we'll be piloting it here in the South Bay and particularly right here in Inglewood. So I thank you for your support. I thank the uh, staff. Uh, Mike Falco and the mayor's uh, and the city manager's office and the uh, the city attorney's office for helping us get through this and we're raring to go. Okay. You have the rest of my time next. All right. <laughs> thank you. Oh my goodness. Well, let me tell you something. First of all, I want to thank the city attorney's office, city manager's office, Mr. Falco, for getting us through this. You know, sometimes in government there are deadlines, and sometimes work just has to be done. And, and this really isn't the ivory tower. This is the workplace. And sometimes council people do have to contact people and work. Now, now I knew that we had this big document in the city attorney's office. And I knew that staff had a lot of issues to work around, most of them related to the interaction between the city and the WIB and our liability issues so that we didn't obtain liability in an undue manner. And so I sat down with the city attorney. He briefed me on the cogent areas so that I didn't have to go through the entire document because most of the document was not that critical. And so talked with he and the city manager and, and gave my input to them based on what they thought the issues were. And I'm sure other council people did as well. And then he broke this down. The city attorney broke it down to two pages of cogent issues. And I feel very comfortable voting on it. It just... You, you know, this is not, um, uh, it's not an issue of fault, it's an issue of getting the work done. And this is so important to the city. Do you realize how wonderful it is to have a workforce center chaired by the city of Inglewood as a lead agency, housed in the city, and all those millions of dollars floating around our city? I could not conceive of not voting on this. Could not conceive of it. So I, I, I'm going to support this vigorously. Madam City Clerk. Council Members Stevens. Epstein. Dunlap. Aye. Morales. Aye. Franklin. Aye. Mayor Butts. Aye. DR4. Staff report recommending approval of the welfare to work vocational intermediary and direct services contract by and between the County of Los Angeles and the City of Inglewood. Move approval. Second. Madam City Clerk. Council Member Stevens? Aye. Dunlap? Aye. Morales? Aye. Franklin? Aye. Mayor Butts? Aye. DR5 will be held over until tomorrow at 4 o'clock. CM1? No CM1 reports. Uh, A1? Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the Council. There was a closed session held as to CS1, closed session, confidential. Attorney-client privilege, potential litigation under Government Code Section 54956.9B1, claim of Huntington Beach Honda. 
request a motion to authorize payment of billing. So moved. Second. Madam City Clerk. Um, Council Member Stevens. Aye. Dunlap. Aye. Morales. Aye. Franklin. Aye. Mayor Bud. Aye. There was a closed session held as to CS2, closed session, confidential. Attorney client privilege potential litigation under government code section 54956.9B1 claim of Motorola. Request a motion to authorize payment of billings. So moved. Second. Madam City Clerk. Council Member Stevens. Aye. Dunlap. Aye. Morales. Aye. Franklin. Aye. Mayor Butts. Aye. It was a closed session held as to CS3, closed session, confidential, attorney client privilege, potential litigation under government code section 54956.9B1 claim of Carl Warren and company. Request a motion to authorize payment of billings. So moved. Second. Madam City Clerk. Council Member Stevens. Aye. Dunlap. Aye. Morales. Aye. Franklin. Aye. Mayor Butts. Aye. CS4 was pulled. CS5 and CSA1 closed session confidential attorney client privilege potential litigation under government code section 54956.9 subsection C Adobe and Gravilla housing. Request motion to authorize foreclosure proceedings. So moved. Second. Madam City Clerk. Council and agency members. Stevens. Abstain. Dunlap. Aye. Morales. Aye. Franklin. Aye. Mayor Chairman Butts. Aye. There was a closed session held as to CS6 and CSA2 and CSH1. Closed session, confidential attorney client privilege, potential litigation under government code section 54956.9 subsection C regarding order by Department of Finance for the remittance of low and moderate income housing fund. Request a motion to authorize litigation in this matter. I'll move. Second. Madam City Clerk. Council and agency members, Stevens. Aye. Dunlap. Aye. Morales. Aye. Franklin. Aye. Um, Mayor, uh, Chairman Butts. Aye. That concludes reports out of closed session this evening and there are no verbal reports. All right. Madam City Clerk, CC1. I just wanted to report out to remind people that um, March 18th is the last day to register to vote. April 2nd is election day. Please, we have a few more, I think, oh gosh, almost a week maybe left so that those that aren't registered, please get registered and that be the end of my reports. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, <coughs> City Treasurer is absent today. Um, we'll go to CI1. Councilman Seaver, you said that you had someone you wanted to have speak. Uh, as I told Councilman Morales, uh, his time would come out of your time to present your initiative. So and so how much time are we permitted on this, sir? Five minutes. Thank you, sir. Mr. Falco, we're at three. Can you set it to five, please? Thank you, sir. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this <coughs> is uh, an initiative that I'm bringing forward as a result of hiring practices at the forum. Uh, it is a project labor monitoring MOU between the City of Inglewood and the Center for Contract Compliance. Uh, Center for Contract Compliance representative is here. Uh, I would like for him to step forward, please. And I would just like to give you a little history on something. The reason why the catalyst for this was that the Inglewood Today newspaper was hired to advertise jobs at the at the forum and that they were conducting interviews for workers and these jobs were to actually it states right here employment opportunities and this is on the key here is February 7th 19 um, February 7th 2013 in the Inglewood today and it states here laborers and at laborers and asbestos lead certified workers needed on behalf of Madison Square Gardens and it states also the forum and elsewhere TEG um, LVI will provide training and certification for non-certified workers. I went to that location. Remember, the papers was on the um, information stand downstairs at nine o'clock at nine thirty. It requests that you appear there on February seventh at eight o'clock at eight o'clock in the morning. Now, this paper was not distributed in the community, but you're supposed to disappear there on Thursday for a job. That piqued my interest. I went there and then come to find out that the people who were working there were not being paid prevailing wage. $10, $10 uh, for new hires, 
and twelve dollars if you have experience. Go right ahead, sir. Thank, Thank you, you again. My name is James Reed. Yes. Our organization is a nonprofit corporation. Uh, we've been in existence for twenty-five years now. I myself have been a general engineering contractor for over twenty years, <clears throat> and with the Center for Contract Compliance for ten now, uh, seven of which I've been the executive director. What we do is we have offices throughout Southern California, Bakersfield to San Diego. We monitor projects that are subject to prevailing wages. And there's a big misconception on prevailing wages. A lot of people believe that if a job is subject to prevailing wage, it's union contractors only that get to do that work. That is absolutely not true. Any contractor that's licensed in the state of California with a proper license can do projects subject to prevailing wage. Uh, what we find, uh, we do monitor that as well as local hire, and a lot of the cities that we worked with for local hire and local purchase have seen great benefit out of that. And um, what, what Councilman Stevens is saying is, I believe in the agreement between the city and uh, Madison Square Gardens, there was an arrangement for local hire, uh, and if it got um, if it got out of place or wasn't advertised properly, that's a detriment, in my opinion, to the city. Uh, but the prevailing wage, it's in, it's in the agreement uh, between the city and Madison Square Gardens. Uh, I'm sure it was there for a reason. And um, Councilman Stevens asked me to present a memorandum of understanding where we would go and monitor the project. Um, it's non-invasive. We have investigators that go to job sites. They talk to workers. Uh, the contractors can, can provide the city with certified payroll records which is required in Labor Code 1775, uh, I believe. Uh, we would review those records. They can be redacted, uh, so we only see the addresses. We don't get names or Social Security numbers. And we, we review those uh, certified payroll records based on the type of work that's being done because the wages are based on craft work. It varies by craft. Uh, if we find uh, discrepancies there, then we would go back to the city and let them know that we do we found discrepancies and then make a decision on how we would deal with that. But prevailing wages uh, goes all the way back to Davis Bacon Federal in the late 1930s, I believe, and it, it was to prevent companies from coming out of the area uh, at low, low wages and taking work away from local workers. And so just 33 seconds yes. left. Sorry, we could not allow you to speak longer. You the can, issue here comes. You, you can give him another minute if you want. Oh, we can have another minute, sir? Go Thank ahead. you. Go, Go right ahead, sir. Well, <clears throat> and oh, would you just let the people know that there is no cost to the city of Inglewood for your no, services? No, we're a nonprofit, so we do this uh, at no cost to any of the agencies that we work with. And we work with agencies in a lot of different ways. But uh, prevailing wage provides a, a fair wage, and it's a wage that's to be paid by all contractors, union or non-union, on a project, and it, it levels the playing field. And those wages, uh, the fair wages, come back to the, to the community. And also, what I've seen in my 20 some odd years as a contractor, that low paid construction workers, uh, quality of work lacks, it, it definitely lacks. And, and also, um, we work with the district attorneys in Riverside and Orange County and we take cases to them with contractors that are so egregious, you, you wouldn't believe what they do to their workers. They cheat the IRS, they cheat EDD, workman's comp, and everything else. So th there's a reason for us to monitor these Very things. Very good, sir, and I thank you so much for taking Thanks. your time to come down here today. Mr. City Attorney, you know, when, whenever we're bringing forward an initiative, it's asked to be submitted five days, uh, seven days prior. Have you had an opportunity to review this, sir, this MOU? Memorandum of Understanding between the City of Inglewood and Contract Compliance. In my understanding, it's totally between our city and the Contract Compliance. No, I don't re review your initiatives, Council Members' initiatives. You have, Mr. Fields, you did not give it to the City Attorney for review? The Council adopted an initiative policy, and it does not. You specifically took out the language regarding having, requiring the City Attorney to review. Okay. Well, then I would like to make a motion if, uh, I would like to make a motion that we direct staff to in fact allow legal to review this MOU, this document, and to report back to us what they're after they've reviewed it. Uh, do I have a second? Uh, yes, I'll second, uh, but I would like to add that not only review it, but uh, if there's going to be an agreement uh, between the City of Inglewood and the nonprofit, 
that the uh, chances are the city attorney will have to put it in a whole different format. Um, so it's just a matter of bringing something back that would be acceptable uh, to the city attorney's office. Okay, I would accept that. I would, I would accept that amendment. Councilman Franklin. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, you know, I, I recognize the, the, the intent of what my colleagues are trying to do in District 1. Uh, my concern is us as a city being in compliance with the owner participation agreement. So I have some issues with that. And particularly uh, going back when this item came before us at the City Council on uh, January 30th, 2012, uh, we were introduced on a particip participation agreement which we adopted. That content says that the participant, in this case is now the uh, Madison Square Gardens, uh, has a legal obligation to participate. The participant shall fully comply with all cause of all contractors, subcontractors performing any and all work contemplated by the use of the owner participation agreement on itself to comply with the California prevailing wage wages. Uh, in addition to that, we we were anticipating that we needed the, the fox watching the hen house. So in addition to that, we had incorporated exhibit H of the agreement, which talks about the workforce outreach coordinating program and in consultation with the city and subject to its review. So we have city that will be reviewing to make sure they're in compliance. No different than we've had any other issues when it came to the housing development such as the Renaissance and others whereby we had staff to monitor to make sure that the prevailing wages were being acted upon. It also identified, such as this gentleman has indicated, that uh, he does monitoring well in this agreement, it specifically states that the participant shall hire a local qualified workforce outreach coordinator whose job responsibilities shall include marshalling and coordinating the workforce outreach, training, and placement programs for the following types of positions, construction jobs, employees working for contractors, subcontractors, and vendors in connection with the form operations, uh, including the employees working with the uh, participated owned, owned facilities at the forum. It has already put in the plan that there's an aggregate dollar value of $250,000 to help facilitate and coordinate to make sure that they do live up to what we fought hard for and that was a livable jo wage jobs and therefore it was incorporated in the owner participation agreement. I only see this as, as benefiting an entity who is not going through the RFP process for the workforce outreach coordinator, which we kept talking about local hire, and we spelled out in the agreement that the participant had to be a local hire. So I, I can't support this recommendation. Thank you. Well, I'm going to start off with this. This owner petition, participation agreement took 14 months to be put together, and this is one of the biggest components of it, local hiring. So far, out of 15 workers that were hired to work on the project, seven were workers from Inglewood. MSG is investing over a quarter of a million dollars over two years to support local hiring initiatives and workforce outreach. And several weeks ago, they embarked on the pre-construction phase, and they began assessing subcontractor sub candidates for seating removal and they've issued RFPs that outline specific prevailing wage requirements. In order to be selected as a subcontractor for this job, the company was required to fully comply with the prevailing wage requirements that were outlined in the OPA, the Owner Participation Agreement, and were reiterated in the RFP, the Request for Proposals, and included in the contract with MSG. Now, we have an agreement with MSG, and it has certain procedures. The actions proposed aren't provided for in the OPA. The appropriate next step, if we found that they were out of compliance, if there was an alleged violation, would be to send a notice to MSG, and that's in section 4.1 of the OPA. The city cannot exercise any rights or remedies until MSG has had 30 days, starting from the date that they received notice, to cure any alleged problem. In addition to that, the city has a compliance officer that is on our payroll that is supposed to monitor prevailing wage projects. So we have so much of this already covered to initiate this initiative would really go outside 
our procedures and go outside our agreement. So I can't support it. Okay, Madam City no, Clerk. I, I, just, I, have comments. Um, I think uh, I'm going to say people up here are, don't get it. They're not understanding. Um, obviously, Madison Square Garden, we're in agreement with them. They've committed $250,000 for local hiring. Um, and it's like if we find something, well, how are we going to find this out? This is what they do. They make sure that the $250,000 is spent on local hire and everything that, that everyone has suggested or read from the document to make sure that they've done all of these things. And this is a service uh, by a company with some expertise and we certainly, when this, if and when this is brought back with an, uh, an MOU and agreement with the city attorney and the city manager's office, can bring back also more documentation with regard to the company's background to more fully inform the public. This is a free service being offered to us to make sure that $250,000 is spent on local hire, to make sure that everything that's in the agreement that was referenced at Madison Square Garden said they would do, that, that they're doing by an expert group of people that this is what they do. And uh, I, I I know we have an employee who does some of this type of work, but this is, won't be adequate with regard to the type of project that's going on. So uh, I don't see any conflict with anything in the agreement at all. It just uh, allows the city to, to, to verify and, and to monitor and to make sure that everything they promised uh, that we're going to be getting. And if they have 30 days to cure or correct, and that's great. They get notified, they have the 30 days. There's no conflict here with the agreement. It just uh, makes sure that everything that we want as a city, we get as a city. And those individuals who are hired are hired under the conditions that we want them to be hired and that they're paid under the conditions that we want them to be paid. Um, I see it as just uh, a win uh, for the city. So I hope my colleagues uh, would change uh, their mind. Sometimes I think they vote on who the initiative's name is under as opposed to the content of this initiative. Uh, we've had other services in the past offered to us at no charge, and uh, so you don't have to do an RFP process if there's no charge, if there's no cost you know, to it. And uh, once again, I would ask my colleagues to think beyond uh, themselves with these issues and, and look to how it would benefit this city, this community, and uh, allow the, remember we're asking just for the city attorney to take a look at the memorandum of understanding to rewrite it in a format that the city legal and city manager's office would approve, get more information with regard to references of the company, and then bring it back for a vote. That's all we're asking for here. Uh, it would allow you more time to do your own personal research if you wanted to. That's all this vote is about right now. It's just to explore this idea of the free service, make sure the 250000 is spent. Well, I think it's a, it's, it's a great idea. Uh, we've had other projects where people always said they did prevailing wage. Well, we have staff here, one or two people. They're very busy do it, doing all kinds of projects. This takes a designated group of people to look at a particular project. And I would ask, once again, my colleagues to allow it to just move forward. That's all this is. Get in a, something written up, get references in the company, that's what you want, do your own homework, and then have it brought back, and then have the discussion, the debate, and the final vote. But I see it as very beneficial to this community. Thank you. Yeah. Did you want me to repeat the motion, Madam Speaker? Yes, uh, the part that you amended, hmm. yes. Oh. Well, uh, Mr. Mayor, I didn't have a chance to speak to the actual motion. Mine were just uh, comments. Well, can I get Ms. Dunlap just to say it so I can get it down and then whatever. Go right ahead, Ms. Dunlap. Okay. Go right ahead. Um, that the, uh, the councilman for his initiative, he has a memorandum of understanding here uh, that it be rewritten by our city attorney's <coughs> office in a format which is acceptable to the legal department and acceptable to the city manager mm -hmm. and that it be brought back. Uh, I, can, in I concur. Report. Excellent. All right, Councilman Steele. Yes. I just would like to clarify this for the public so the public truly understands this service is not, would not cost, if, this, if we as a body agreed to this after it was reviewed by, the, by our legal team, our city attorney, it would not cost the city of Inglewood one dime. It is strictly a, an, an agreement between the contract compliance organization and the city of Inglewood. MSG has absolutely nothing to do with this. The catalyst for this for me was, was that 
MSJ, Madison Square Garden, promised to hire Inglewood residents. They promised to hire residents. We're making $18 million available to them. Make no mistake about it, $18 million. Now, former property tax increment funds. Now, the newspaper was is dated February 7th. It was distributed February 7th at 9 o'clock. It was not distributed in the community until Friday. The advertisement states very clearly, states very clearly, laborers and asbestos-led certified workers needed on behalf of Madison Square Garden. Madison Square Garden is looking for laborers and asbestos-led certified workers. Now those jobs pay, this is what money we're talking about, prevailing wage. $40, no experience, up to $50 with experience. In comparison to what was stated to me by LVI that they were offering to anyone who signed up, $10 per hour without experience, $12, $12 an hour with experience. Now, when I arrived there, it was 9.30. No, it was, excuse me, I received the paper at 9.30. I arrived on the site at 10. I arrived there and I asked them, how many applications have you acquired? They said, well, there was one guy that was walking around out here for his exercise. He signed on. One. I stayed there. I went and spoke with, with the project manager, Nick, inside what used to be called the Forum Club. He placed me in contact with MSG in New York. They said they would get back in contact with me. I stayed on the site till 12, and there was only one other individual who came up and signed who was also exercising, walking around. There was no long line for these jobs. Remember, they're only removing the seats from the form. And because they were painted with lead-based paint, that makes it asbestos re hazardous related. Now, I receive a phone call then from Madison Square Garden at 2 o'clock, and they inform me that all the positions have been filled. <laughs> I said, they've all been filled. Well, how many positions are we, are we talking about? Oh, 12 or so. I said, well, wait a minute. The people have not had an opportunity to um, participate. Can you hold this application process over until Monday? I will distribute leaflets and flyers to let the community know, because I have a number of residents in my district who have children. They themselves would like to be able to at least apply for this job. They said to me, that's not necessary. They can have an opportunity to apply on Friday. I said, but you said that you fulfilled all the, uh, you filled all the positions. Well, they can apply with LVI. And uh, LVI has other projects that are going on. Where is LVI located at? Santa Fe Springs. Now, here's my point: is that LVI is their sub is their contractor that was doing the hiring. But more important than that, what a disrespect to this community! A disrespect to place an ad in a newspaper on the day that you're hiring, and then after you place that ad there. Proclaim that all the positions are filled. Who were these workers? Did they know someone here? Were they already filled? And what about those individuals who did show up on Friday? They filled out applications in hopes of that they would have an opportunity to be hired? See, a contract compliance, contract compliance organization, they would have been at the forefront of that because, believe it or not, I was, I was to be notified ahead of time that they were going to do this. They, MSG never contacted me. Now, they may have contacted the mayor because, of course, he negotiated the total MSG contract by himself. The entire $18 million deal was negotiated by the man in the middle chair. But the point of this, state exit, but the point of this today is this, is that the Center for Contract Compliance, they will represent us for free. And all that is on the table right now is just simply to allow our city attorney to review this and place it into a format and then bring it back to us. We're not here to hire them today. Just simply he would review it and place it into a format. And with that, my time has concluded. And so, colleagues, I hope that you will support. I hope that you will support the motion that's on the table because it is for the benefit of all of our district, all of our district residents here in the city of Inglewood. Thank, Thank you. you. Council Morales. Thank you.
Um, real quick to staff, uh, were you aware that Councilman uh, mm -hmm. Stevens had this information available in regards to the form, and did you look into it? The information regarding the um, the uh, recruitment the for workers? Yeah, or alleged lack of, of payment of prevailing wage. No, at this point, I, I did speak with uh, MSG staff today, and they did confirm to me that they, and show and demonstrate to me, and I'm confident with my compliance manager that they are meeting the um, prevailing wage requirements that the so state they requires. Gave the city, whatever. They, exa exactly. They've hired. They've hired a private consulting firm right. that will be responsible for submitting those reports to us on a monthly basis. And that's that's what I was looking at because on Exhibit H of the agreement. Uh, that's, you know, it was said about the $250,000, but that's what they set aside to actually hire for a group to do that work, it appears. Uh, uh, no, that, that's it not... It says right here, in, well, consul in consultation right. with the city and subject to its review, right. participant shall prepare, initiate, and fund a workforce outreach coordination right. program. That, part is, amount of that part is true, but the issue that Councilman Stevens is bringing up is the issue regarding the hourly rate for the employees no, I, that they I did I hire. I'm okay. Getting, I'm getting to two things okay. here. All right. um, so what I'm saying is that the, the, the MSG has agreed to hire somebody to do this. Right, that's correct. And, and uh, really check on, on the local benefits that are actually in the original agreement. Right. So they're actually going to hire somebody to do that. Right. Now, in regards to prevailing wage, which is the law, uh, there should be a process in place if there isn't already in regards to uh, receiving the documents here in house and confirming <coughs> that everything uh, is actually uh, legitimate in, into the state law, right? That's correct. And we're comfortable with that so far. Based on the information that I saw today and what I'm Ultimately, I'm, yeah. you know, what, what the problem with this initiative is that, uh, you know, not that we don't all believe in the fact that that needs to be done. We're either comfortable with the fact it's being done or we're not, period. Uh, now, in regards to uh, being able to create an initiative and bring in a group based on an initiative, uh, that's actually not the type of practice we should be doing here. You know, if in fact we're going to bring a group, whether we're going to pay for it or it's going to be free, uh, there should be a process which vets uh, every kind of opportunity, such as an RFP process. We shouldn't be in the practice of bringing forth, one of us bringing forth a group uh, that we have approved and bringing <coughs> it forth for a vote. Uh, that those are my comments. Those are the only issues I have. I haven't seen anything that creates any questions. I'll be reaching out to MSG and staff myself in regards to how this process is going, who they have hired to do it, and what access we have either uh, through them, which we should have direct access to them uh, to verify everything we need to, to do. So those are my comments right now. Thank you. Madam City Clerk. Council Member Stevens. This is on the motion. Madam City Clerk, this well, is on the motion? motion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we have, have the, motion. Yes. This is on the motion? Yes, yes. sir. Okay. Aye. Dunlap? Aye. Morales? No. Franklin? No. Mayor Butts? No. Public comments. Any person? Miss Miss Austin? Yes, Pl Please hold it down. Any persons wishing to address the City Council on any matter con connected with city business not elsewhere considered may do so at this time. Yes, my name is Alfonso Parker, Jr. Again, Vietnam Bet 6667, Conscious Objector. I'm alive. Uh, we're speaking about funding uh, monies, not enough money, and where we get it from. I've been hammering home about this Veterans Administration thing in VA, the home, and now you have the VFW, which I was a member of, and I dissolved that uh, membership for my own personal reasons. Uh, but uh, I have been hammering home about the thousands of dollars that sits in those buildings out there, each veteran should be getting a month that could be spent here. The VA is checking eyes of their children and their blood and whatever else and their teeth. If these veterans have their money, they would be paying money to dentists on Market Street to deal with the teeth or the eyeglasses. The child support for those that have children that would be spent in the community through the family going to the, these are funds Inglewood should have. Mr. Morales, I found out that I think the uh, Hen Hendrick is your district, am I right? Part of it is, I don't know. Yeah, okay. And I also learned in checking your uh, bio that uh, you have a law degree. I can tell the way you talk too because you're very articulate uh, when you go at Mr. Stevens here. Um, you have done nothing, spoke to me, asked me nothing, said, hey, let's 
sit down, where are you coming from? There's thousands of dollars out there. And no VA is the same no matter what district it's in. New York to Chicago, they give different medications. You can go there and they'll tell you, we don't give this to veterans. It's a no-no because of uh, side effects. So it's not a federal issue. These are local issues when that VA sits out there in your district in Inglewood with thousands of dollars. You don't say it's a federal issue. This is money that can come here. And I know you, uh, unless you passed the bar already, I know you have a degree, I've read it. I don't know if you passed the bar and that's none of my business here in Texas. Here, you, Texas, you couldn't practice here, so it'd have to be California. But, oh, uh, Mr., oh my God, he's gone. I'd like for him to be here when I talk because right he, here. oh, thank you, yeah. I don't, don't, see, I, I get leery when I don't see you. When they talk about things that he talks that comes, he can talk because he's not licensed to practice. But when you sit here and you hear these things, and they come up as a California attorney, okay, only in California, unless you, know, unless you got one in Texas or wherever you come from, you can have more than one. Uh, I watch you. And when they deal with these issues, people, you need to know, if he's not in the building and they're dealing with uh, legal issues, you need to stand up and say, hey, let's hold up on this here until the city attorney is present to hear what you got to say. Because he... He can jeopardize his license, whatever, or investigation by sitting there and not coming forth with his opinion as he's being asked to do sometimes. Okay? Good evening again, Leroy Fisher, the First District. First off, very quickly, uh, last week when you had those seniors in here, I think it was a, a terrible thing that you did, whoever did it. I watched the lady sitting in front of me. She said to the woman who bought them here, I'm ready to go. I'm tired. The lady was so tired that she scooted down on the seat. The lady who bought them here said, sit up, sit up, you know. Yeah. Those people were here in wheelchairs. They, they were here on walkers. Had there been an earthquake or anything, you know, you them would have been responsible. And we, the city of the taxpayers, would have had to end up paying for it, you know. Mr. Mayor, I heard uh, last week, too, that uh, in this new contract that uh, we set with the uh, waste hauler, uh, your brother is uh, now a dispatcher for that same waste hauler. It's well, in the contract? The trash haulers, okay, never mind. supposedly. Well, Go whether ahead. he is or not, Go that's ahead, some Mr. information Fisher. was out there. You know, uh, today, you know, the first district in which I live, you know, have been broken in all over. Many, many people. Today, at about 12 o'clock, 12.30, there was a break-in at uh, 83rd Place and, and uh, 7th Avenue, between 7th and 8th Avenue. Mayor Dorn happened to be out there, too, because his home was broken in a couple of times. They had officers from Hawthorne, officers from Santa Monica. One of the officers from Inglewood told me that the reason they had to bring those people in here is because we had but one dog to work the area after the L.A. helicopter flew around there for about 10 minutes. Then they bought Santa Monica in here, they bought Hawthorne in here. We had as many as 16 officers that I counted out there from Inglewood. And then they bought these people in here. They were there from 12.30 to 4.30. These guys only worked 12 hours a day for three days a week, you know. And it was like they were after Donner or somebody. They were after these kids breaking in the homes and they were out there all day with, with automatic rifles, you know, after some kids, like, again, like Donner. So, you know, it's, it's appalling to me that that would have happened. I wonder if we, in fact, have to pay for those officers from Santa Monica and the officers from Hawthorne. How did they get here anyway? You know, you guys uh, do things to me that are, are, are really, sad you know you had a guy by Nunez in here one time now he's he's in jail uh, you know you had uh, these people uh, all these seniors uh, come in here you know the things that you them do are rotten and dirty you know we fought and fought and fought to have these meetings at seven o'clock at night you them just to justify your own means Bring all of those poor seniors thank, in here thank you, you Mr. Know, Fisher. to justify a means to an end. Your end. It's a sad, sad thing.
Okay. Um. Good evening, Mayor, staff, and council. I was watching TV one evening, and uh, I was watching the Sports Channel. Saw Mr. Mr. Butt's picture come up. Saw Maxine Waters' picture come up. Saw First District Councilman Dotson come up. That's the wish list. And Mr. Padilla on the other council wish list. And I wondered to myself, why is the mayor pushing these other people in those seats that are already occupied. See, because our mayor is not that politically, should be challenging to say these people are out of here, or he wants an ex-cop and Mr. Dotson to be in these seats. See, our mayor is not a facilitator of that. His job that we hired him for, we the citizens, is to lead the city. And it doesn't matter to him who sits in any seat, he will show that he is the leader of the city and he will work with, if they put some dogs in your seats, he will work to move this city's business forward. I was insulted because this commercial came on during sports. You see, I'm a black man, I love sports. So now it insulted my intelligence. It couldn't come on during a, a nice business meeting, but no, it can't come on a sports channel. Does that say that black people are only attentive when their sports are? That if it is, that means that our children are being led down the wrong road for saying, okay, sports is what your life is going to be about. This is all that you do. No, there are kids that actually do, do other things besides watch sports. So. I would not like to see that commercial come on at, at all, because I think it's an insult. Why are you going to insult the people that are already in, in those seats with your wish list? It's just an insult. It's just an insult. Thank you. And those are my comments. We're going to have to take a break. They have to change the tape. So we'll be back at 10 after 10. I appreciate every council member's opinions uh, on the initiative um, and some recommendations would be to do some research on the organization that uh, Madison Square Gardens has hired to look into uh, the compliance on this project and also um, in, in the many years I've been doing this most probably 90 percent of the cases that we take to the state where there's violations the complaints come from workers talking to workers not just by looking just not not by just looking at certified payroll records because they can be doctored but when you have the worker and you're talking to him that's that's really when you get the the real truth of the matter whether they're being paid, paid properly so worker interviews and, and find out the credentials and, and uh, the detail that the organization that's doing the monitoring is doing Thank you, sir. thanks please come forward okay Hello, um, my name is Joyce Smith, I'm in District 1, and I just want to um, be sure that I got the right understanding from the last exchange that we had about Madison Square Garden, which I'm very happy to have them come to the city of Inglewood. But when I understand that they were supposed to commit to hiring a certain number of uh, local residents. No, ma'am, they can't do that. They can, they can have an outreach and an attempt to hire local residents, but you're not allowed to discriminate against people based on where they live, but they do have an outreach component. Well, you here. can encourage the hiring of Absolutely. local residents. And close you to can have some sort of yes. a program. Absolutely. Okay, but you don't do that by putting like a phony ad in the paper that people don't see. And, you know, to me, you have the power 
to address uh, Madison Square Garden, address the issues. When we see a lot of work being done in Inglewood, and I just don't see Inglewood residents doing the work, it disturbs me. And you have the power to sort of break that up, but instead you just go along with whatever they want to do. You don't stand up for the people, for the, uh, for the workers in the city of Inglewood. 50% of the people they hired for their first job were Inglewood residents, 50%. Are you sure? Okay. I, I mean, well, then, why, why I, was the why was the thing about uh, going to Santa Fe Springs if you wanted to get a job? Why why did that come up? No, no. LVI is based in Santa Fe Springs, but I, I met the workers personally. Fifty percent of them, almost fifty percent, seven out of fifteen were Inwood residents. Well, then I got the wrong impression. But yeah. I, what? But I still want to say that you have the power to bring jobs to Inglewood. You know, if you stand up for the residents and don't misuse your power and don't just go along to get along. You know, stand up for the people in this city. And I so often feel that the people in this city get betrayed. You know, they really do like, very like often get said. betrayed by people in power who, who, who are more sensitive to the power structure mm -hmm. than to the workers. Like I said, close to 50% is a good ratio. Well, will you please see to it that, that that you keep that up. Yes, ma'am. You know, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. No, I, I met them all. Mr. Mayor, Council, my name is Joseph Texer, District 1. I'm asking this council to remove James Butts as council chairman because Butts has repeatedly abused his power as chair, he has repeatedly lied to and misled the public, and helped others do the same, hiding dangerous problems in the police department and violations of the law for his own political reasons. Last time I spoke here, I described how when James Butts was Santa Monica's police chief, the state court ruled that his police department violated people's civil rights. And Butts himself has admitted here that he knew his officers were being trained to deliberately violate the Miranda rules and interrogate Americans even after they'd asserted their constitutional right to speak to an attorney. In his closing statements that night, Butts implied that the only reason anyone was criticizing him was because elections were coming up. But I just want to make it clear, I have never criticized the mayor to help anyone else on this council. In fact, I've repeatedly said that this entire city council, including the councilman from my district, Mike Stevens, has helped Butts lie, mislead the public, and hide police misconduct and violations of the law. When I first told this council that IPD had repeatedly refused to investigate the attempted murder of my neighbor's young son, did Mike Stevens offer to help? Nope. He tried to shoo me away to Inglewood's powerless police commission. When I repeatedly told this council, including Mike Stevens, that IPD's Captain Sissick played for me IPD recordings where officers told me that shooting a gun out of a car wasn't really a crime in Inglewood, and saying that if my neighbor's son was shot at, there must have been a reason he was shot at and saying that I shouldn't file a report on the shooting because my house might get shot up. Did, did Mr. Stevens do anything? No. When I repeatedly told this council, including Mike Stevens, that IPD, the city clerk, the city attorney were, were illegally ignoring my public records requests for those IPD recordings and other public records that prove my complaints, did Mike Stevens help? No. Just like James Butts, Mike Stevens helped cover up violations of the law. Now, as the elections got closer, Mike Stevens did give lip service to supporting my right to use the IPD recordings I finally did get to educate this council about police misconduct, but that was just lip service. He didn't do anything. For 18 months, Mike Stevens has selfishly, irresponsibly, and negligently done nothing regarding the problems in IPD that I've described, showing himself to be no less a politician than James Butts. Maybe he has helped some residents get windows, and that's great, but if he doesn't help improve our police department, they better be bulletproof windows. In summary, I don't criticize James Butts to help some other council member win an election. I criticize James Butts because it is a documented and undisputable fact that he misleads the public. He lies, he violates the rules, and he helps violate the law. He is a disgrace to Inglewood. F. Austin District 2. First thing I want to say to Chairman Butts, I don't know why you call my name. You can't intimidate me. You are the one hated in the city. No one like y'all three, okay? They listen to me, not you. 
So stop calling my name. Everybody was back there like, you in love with me? Let's get married. Come on now, let's get married. We the same age. Let's get married. I know you like looking at me because you like calling my name. Anyway, now, Inglewood News, this is a disgrace to us as taxpayers. But you all get up here. First of all, Wanda Brown, you don't, she don't even matter. She shouldn't even be sitting there. That's a waste of our money right there. How about endorsements? What about the ones that's lying? What about Padilla that's lying? Talking about, oh, Kern, and I work for all these people. Nobody, he ain't got a letter from none, not one of them. What about blocking these pictures? I mean, this is a, a city, Martin Luther King thing that you all blacking out these kids' faces. This is, I mean, Willie Brown stooping this low. How low could you go, man? What are you all doing? And Councilman Folk can't even hold up his own district, and he walking with Padilla in, in, in Judy's district. And don't he, he won't be in his. I mean, come on now. Y'all know better than that. And then you telling people, knocking on doors, telling people to put, because you put George Dotson sign in, in, in the yard instead of Mike Stevens sign, because you put uh, Padilla sign and remove Judas. That's not political. That's against the law. How could you all just get involved in big politics like this? Even Mayor Dorn wouldn't do nothing that low. And he got evicted, put out of politics, but he would never stoop this low. If you don't want your picture in the paper, then stay out of the pictures when they're being taken. Some of you got to be seen. Nobody here wants y'all endorsements. Nobody even like y'all in this city. I'm just telling it the way it is. They can't wait to get rid of you three. I'm serious. And poor Mike sitting up here trying to help the people. How you going to help him when he ain't got no votes? So you stop banging on Mike, too. He need three votes. And don't forget, there ain't going to be no election stealing this time. I already know what y'all got planned. <laughs> I'm the best at it. Ask, ask FBI who the best at, at busting bail in Inglewood. Good afternoon. My name is Willie A.G. I'm not up here to brag. I'm a disabled veteran, 100% disabled veteran. Any time, citizen come up here and demean the FW. These are people that went to war and fought, and and say that they're not eligible for the city of Inglewood. They got a problem. This individual that just spoke, Mayor Dorn kept her out of jail. Twice, twice, kept her out of jail. It's a matter of record. Uh, Mayor but Butts, I support you 200%. I support Mr. Franklin, Councilman Franklin, Councilman Morales. You're good for the city. And I, it makes me sick to hear these people come up here and demean you guys for representing this city. Uh, I just don't understand it. I don't think people should have a right to do that. Anything they come up here and say, it should be forced to back it up. I want to say this, concerning the red lights, camera red lights, well, I got my first one. And I know the judge ain't going to believe me, but I got a witness. The caution light didn't even come on. But, you know, I, I'm going to fight it. I don't know what's going to happen, but uh, uh, the caution light. I think the city of Inglewood should get rid of those lights because they're not consistent, you know. And like, I'm pretty sure uh, $490, you know, and, and, you know, I don't, I don't want it to go, I don't need it on my record because uh, I drove trucks for 37 years and never even got a moving violation, and I don't want this to happen to my record. Uh, anyway, I hope the city get rid of it. Thank you.
Well, my name is Diane Sombrano, and I thought all those veterans that we love so much actually fought for everyone's right to free speech, even if you don't like it. And uh, that's one of the sad things about it is that unfortunately some people take incredible liberties in kind of misrepresenting. I know when the seniors came to that daytime meeting, most of us would not have believed anyone would have actually used city vehicles to bring, and how did you know there were 25 before they got off the elevator? Whatever. 25 people in wheelchairs and walkers from the senior center that actually advertises its dementia ward. Wow. That would be the Westchester Villas at 220 West Manchester. And I guess that's why Mr. Franklin thinks that seniors forget things especially if you go to the dementia ward on a regular basis. I certainly hope those are not where we're going to find a lot of the votes in this next election. I would not be surprised. But let's go ahead and put that out there for the record. To say that they came to be heard? No, they didn't come to be heard. They came because somebody needed a bus trip. And apparently, it was one of our either contract employees or regular employee who was in charge of bringing them here. How sick, sad, and pathetic is that a waste of public funds when we claim we don't have time or money for the young people of this community and our closing library hours? Yeah. Seems like we have a lot of, well, not so wise uses of our time. Now, I know who put the last hit piece on Gloria Gray out, and I thought that was pretty ridiculous, but it looks like this new flyer, by the way, I don't get these because I'm not in the right district, really is doing another poor, pathetic job. Isn't it funny how we always have animals? Remember the monkeys, the pigs, and now we're doing sheep. But whoever put this together actually thinks that Mike was to, at the city of El Toro. I wish you all would get your facts straight. We weren't at the city of El Toro. We were at the Board of County Supervisors in Orange suggesting that the Orange County Board of Supervisors approve El Toro to take the flights from Lawa so that we wouldn't have all the burden. And by the way, that would be a safety and security measure to actually have an alternate airport that would accept flights if in fact something does happen at our airport. But I see my time is running out. So I'll just close with anyone can go to the ACLU-SC.org for all that information that Mr. Texera keeps on referring to. It's right there on the web and in print. I don't think you all ought to believe all the campaign literature you see. It's just so full of, oh, pathetic lies. Uh, Gil Matthew, District 4, uh, Mayor and City Council. Uh, that Red Flex contract should be rescinded immediately. And I'm telling you, it's costing the city millions of dollars. You're paying $89,000 a month. Now, you can't even account for the money be, for coming back to the city because it's mixed with the regular fines. But well, I can guarantee you, you've been losing money ever since you had that contract. <clears throat> and it's affecting the general fund. And the next thing is, we need, we need a uh, meeting of success agency, an overview of what's going on. Because it's gonna affect, it's gonna affect the general fund in time. Now also is, uh, you're pulling items off the agenda, and people come here to speak on it, and then you, you've given the, item a special meeting the next day. Now you may be technically violating the Brown Act in, in terms of, of posting. You see, because if people are working, now how are you gonna attend a meeting tomorrow at five o'clock or four o'clock or whatever you have? It doesn't make sense. And in fact, you've done it so much with the properties that it's suspect that it's a given giveaway of, of uh, city property. And also, you need some sunlight. Who is this LLC forum? 
See, most people don't know. It's nothing to do with Madison Square Garden. It's Faithful Central Baptist Church. It's church. C-H-U-R-C-H. And some of you may have a conflict of interest. It's a subsidiary of the, of the church for profit. And it shows up on everything that comes to planning. It shows up for LLC. A broke entity. B-R-O-K-A. Like you. Broke. Now, something is wrong, and I think you're getting on the slippery slope. And you must understand, and I want to indicate to you again, you are responsible. Not staff, not the city attorney. You are ultimately responsible. And don't be like Bell say, well, I didn't know. You know, he told me, he said it was good. He said it was good. Well, he's not on trial, you're on trial. But I'm telling you, I don't have enough time. <clears throat> but this city has all of the possibilities to grow. But you've got to stop this horse and donkey show, or whatever they call it, and quit having the tail wag the dog. <coughs> and man up. You guys have a tremendous responsibility. And somebody's going to go down. I don't know who. But if you don't man up, and you can make the city thank attorney you, put Matthew. anything in writing rather than Mr. say, Matthew, your time, sir. thank you very much. So I, you. I hope your time is not up either. Thank you. Good evening, uh, Mayor, City Council, staff. Um, Michael Beatty, uh, District 2. Um, something is terribly wrong here. Um, last time I checked with Webster, it says the definition of a cesspool is a covered well or a pit for the drainage of sinks and toilets, and etc. And I think before this Webster's was published, the Inglewood Today was not listed, so it wasn't published. But anyway, um, for the record, the city should not be subsidizing this newspaper. The city should not be paying the fines that this council has done. Um, Mr. Mayor, prior to you taking office under the former Mayor Dorn, uh, the Inglewood Today was fined the grand sum total of $50,000, and who paid for it? Us. Of course, Mr. Mayor, you weren't here at the time, <clears throat> but there's other two up there that did. The only person that uh, voted against that uh, fine was Councilwoman Dunlap. Mr. Stevens, you weren't here at that time, but the other two were. So the thing is, is that it needs to be noted, she was the only one that voted against uh, something like that. And to this day, we're still paying for the services of this newspaper. So help me understand, where are the checks and balances? How can three people pay a $50,000 fine that this newspaper did that we're still doing business with? Where's, where are the checks and balances? It's an injustice, and we shouldn't be paying for it. Uh, Mr. Mayor, this probably had no effect on you because you probably were not living in the city at that time, but you're still paying the man. The bottom line is payments to the Inglewood uh, today needs to stop, and they need to stop now. In closing, a soil condom or a used condom serves a more useful purpose than the Inglewood today. You'll hear more about this newspaper. Thank you. Frank, District 4. Uh, Mayor, I, I voted for you because I thought you were the better person for the job. But if I had to do it today, no way. There's two people on this council that do their job consistently. I know you don't agree, but we got a voting block sitting up there. The mayor, three, and four. I mean, it's, you'd have to be blind not to see it because nothing gets done here with you all there. And you all should be gone. And I do mean gone. It's really, it's out of hand. 
And I recall that lady sitting right there endorsed you. And I think she was the cause of you winning. You probably don't recall that. But I sat there in that headquarters that you had your celebration in. Remember that? <laughs> you know? And to put somebody in this race to get her out of her seat, I think that's ridiculous. So keep up the good work, folks. Thank you. My name is Jim Jordan from District 2. I want you guys to stop supporting Inglewood today. I'm tired of my tax money going to support something I don't believe in. And I would like for you to take my money, my taxes, and give it to uh, Morningside Chronicle. Thank you for your time. Other public comment? Council comments, Councilman Stevens. Yes, uh, I would like to thank everyone for their support. But first matter of business, I would like to ask the mayor to adjourn the meeting this evening, the council meeting in honor of Edward Marshall, passed away Friday, March 1st, survived by his wife, Gloria, and also his loving family. He worked for MTA for over 23 years, and he died waiting for his soundproof windows. He was my neighbor. He lived on um, my street. And uh, I would like for you, Mr. Mayor, I ask you, Mr. Mayor, to adjourn this meeting in his honor. Ladies and gentlemen, just for clarification, in reference to Ms. Austin, my understanding is that what she was attempting to do in the, in the situation with absentee voting was that she wanted to show how the absentee votes can, in fact, be manipulated. And she placed her freedom on the line to make that point. And she went before a judge, a magistrate, but she did not serve any time. And that was not because of Mayor Dorn. And so <laughs> I have to say that because so oftentimes people, I, I respect everyone who goes to that podium and you can say whatever you wish to say, but when a person is willing to truly put their freedom on the line, then I, I, I feel that the record should be accurate. Now, Ms. Smith, <laughs> but you are uh, correct in what you heard and what you believe that you um, you did not get you did not you stated that you thought you may have gotten the wrong impression you did not receive the wrong impression you have the right correct impression an advertisement was placed in the Inglewood today on February 7th I would call it also a phony ad asked Inglewood residents to come down and fill out a job application and the newspaper is distributed on February 7th. And the only place where it was distributed was in City Hall, Sizzler Restaurant, and stationary locations. It was not distributed in the community until Friday. The gentleman who step step stepped to the front and stated that we're paying for this, yes, we are. It's our tax dollars. And, it, and was it intentional? The mayor, they, they stated that they, the positions were filled. So my question is this. Was it, is it in fact who you knew? Was it already predetermined who was to receive the positions? That's what it sounds like to me. It wasn't on the up and up. Yes, I'm a council person. I'm just telling it the way I feel it. And what I, what I witnessed, because I, they did tell me, only one individual filled out an application at 10 o'clock. By 12, there was only two. And at 2 o'clock, all the positions were supposed to be filled. How did that happen? In two hours? There was no long line there when I went across at 3 o'clock. Because wouldn't, wouldn't there still be a long line? So, it was, so how did these people, how did these people materialize? Ladies and gentlemen, drive home safely. And um, I hope that you would continue to attend the council meetings. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, with regard to the comment about red light cameras, uh, apparently legal has taken a look at our contract and we cannot get out of it, unfortunately. 
So uh, at some point in time it will expire. Do you happen to recall, uh, Mr. Saunders or Mr. Fields, when that? February of 2014. Yeah, so we have another year to go. Uh, very unfortunate. Yes, it is costing us money. Um, I want to speak uh, two things. We, we, we talked about the sound insulation program. I am very concerned about the movement of the northern runway, 260 feet. Uh, that will impact whole new areas of the city with regard to noise impacted homes. Uh, we should be fighting against that. Um, I've spoken uh, at the meetings against the movement of that runway and this city council needs to take that stand with regard to it moving north. Whole, a whole no, new number of homes will be added to the noise contours. And uh, actually, um, I would like us to get a copy of those new noise contours, potential, Mr. Fields, so we can take a look at it so the community have an opportunity to see those. Um, and um, also with regard to the uh, compliance officer, that item was on the agenda that was defeated in a 3-2 vote. Makes no sense to me uh, that people would be against something that benefits the community and the residents who live in this community. There's no cost to the taxpayers, no cost to the city, no cost uh, to Madison Square Garden, and it's, it has no negative impact upon that Madison Square Garden <coughs> whatsoever. They're required to be performing to the standards of their agreement, and to have a nonprofit verify that is appropriate. It's appropriate. Uh, the $250,000 they're going to be spending for local hire and so forth is great. That's in their agreement. They plan to do that. But it was no problem whatsoever for this council to have an agreement brought back, an MOU written uh, under the auspices of our city attorney, to be to brought back to be reviewed. The council would have had an opportunity to review the company. Remember, it's free. It's kind of hard to do an RFP <coughs> asking people to donate their, their time to the city. Um, so uh, you could have done your research on that particular company, and it was just a win-win for everybody. I, I see no, no negative whatsoever. So why this body chose to defeat it before they even had an opportunity to see it, I don't know. Um, so uh, once again, I want to thank those of you who did come out to the meeting tonight. And uh, with regard to the issues that come before us, uh, three members of the council have what put us in the near bankruptcy, and I don't see much change going on. We still violate our financial policies, and I would hope that uh, members of this body would vote independently and think about these issues on the merits, as I do. And uh, I think the city would be a whole lot better off. Thank you. <coughs> I'm gonna jump in real quick. Um, first of all, we still have a ways to go because it seems like um, some of us think that we decide who deserves free speech. I'm going to tell you, I'm, I, nor anybody I know on this dais, had anything to do with the seniors that showed up to the meeting. But I've heard so many complaints and so much disparagement about their mental faculties, their rights to be here because they're disabled, and I don't think that's right. I don't think it should be mentioned that someone chose to be here, and if they were assisted in being here, well, then so much the better whoever assisted them. But to disparage them and say things like dementia wards, meaning that everyone that was here had some problem with mental faculties, I think that's outrageous. I think it's unfair. Um, as far as our vote on the nonprofit, I don't think that someone should come in here with an initiative that nobody's seen until we sit down here and decide that a nonprofit of their choosing now oversees a multi a multi million dollar construction project. That wasn't the vote. Ex excuse me, I'm talking. That wasn't the vote. I'm talking. And you've had it I'm for seven days. I'm talking right now. I don't think that you may be, but it's not truthful. Councilman Stevens, I'll let you speak. Yeah, but let apparently, you misunderstood. You misunderstood uh, the vote. Uh, Miss Miss Dunlap, Miss Dunlap, the vote was to send it to the city attorney to prepare a contract. I don't, I don't no. think that, I don't think that's the way that, that we should, well, would you please stop? Would I, I let you speak, will you let me speak? Yeah, or does free speech only count for you? Just put out accurate okay. information to the public, you. thank you. And in, at any rate, I don't think that's the way that we should do business. And then, for the first time in my 40 years of public service, I heard somebody complain about 
an overwhelming police response to a burglary. I thought that was amazing. The fact that we had mutual aid from two other cities, and I'll tell you why we had mutual aid from two other cities, because there were canines, obviously, that were needed, and we had one dog on, and they needed more than one dog. We have mutual aid agreements with other agencies. They don't charge us anything. It's what we do. I don't think that, I think, uh, but I said to, to hear a complaint about an overwhelming police response, that's a first for me. Um, as far as red flex, I keep hearing about that, and as the councilwoman said, we pay 79000 a month. We got into a bad contract many, many years ago. We don't have the option to just say we're not going to pay them anymore. We're going to have to suck it up until February 2014. So I just hope we can let that go. Um, and then I heard someone call Mr. Agee racial slurs because he disagreed. That's, that's wrong. That's wrong. I know you didn't hear it, but I did. And I think everybody heard it. So we're going to have to do better. Mr. Morales. Um, you know, so much gets said during election season. It's ridiculous. But uh, up here, there's only two ways to vote, yes or no, for each one. You're either going to vote with, with the group who uh, votes to move the city forward, or you're going to vote for one that does nothing. Okay. If you vote for the one that does nothing, the bills wouldn't get paid around here. Every week, nothing would get done, period. You know, you'd just be up here uh, making noise and that's it. The truth is, as council members, you know, the, the, the biggest uh, amount of, of real gain you have here is to be able to produce something for your residents. If your residents come to you and they need something and you have the power to deliver it, you're doing your job. But if you uh, are up here and you can't deliver for your residents, you're not doing your job. That's it. You know, so that's what it's about up here. You know, people say you're always in a block, this and that. Hey, you know, we study what's going to happen. Uh, we either agree with it or we don't. Uh, once we get up here, we move it, and that's it. Everything else is just noise at the end of the day. Um, but this is election season. And at the end of the day, if you just pay attention to what's happening uh, and the votes that are taken, it'll make sense. That's it. Thank you. Good night. Councilman Frank. Uh, yes, Mayor, thank you. <clears throat> I got to reach out to the chair again. Uh, I said at the last meeting, I'll say it again. Uh, we just need to uniformly apply the decorum that we have adopted. And when the people from the audience come to before that podium, that they address the council as a whole. If we continue to follow that decorum that is outlined, we should do quite well. But when you allow individuals to deviate, then you get these personal attacks and you go uh, askew as to what actually are the issues before us, and this body has to make some tough love decisions, and we're going to continue to do that. Um, in reference to a resident talking about the MSG or Madison Square Gardens project, I did want you to know that uh, it's required of Madison Square Gardens that all contract construction contractors must try to achieve a goal for disadvantaged business uh, businesses um, in their for their business is being disadvantaged to have at least 30% of the total value of the funds, not number, but total value of the funds awarded to contractors and some subcontractors related to construction with a goal of at least 50% from such 30% of goals be awarded to local businesses. So there is something in place. There's also that special um, person that's going to be called the Workforce Outreach Program. Uh, coordinator to help facilitate that to make sure that local hire does take place. Finally, I, I received a correspondence from the Political Action Ministry from Faithful Central Bible Church that said on Saturday, March 23rd at, 20, uh, at 9 a.m. to noon, the Political Action Ministry of Faithful Central Bible Church will host a forum for candidates for the Inglewood City Council, District 1 and District 2 district seats. If you're a voting resident of the city of Inglewood, you don't want to miss this opportunity to learn more about the candidates' positions on the issues that are important to you. So come out and get your questions answered, and be sure to invite your friends and neighbors. The forum will be held on Level A of the Faithful Central Bible Ministry uh, Trinity Building, located at 333 West Florence Avenue in Inglewood, California, and good night. Okay, before I recess the meeting, I want to tell you again that I have a town hall meeting, mayor's town hall meeting at uh, 
the living room at 400 West Florence uh, on Saturday, starting at 11 a.m. We'll be talking about sound insulation, crime, um, the budget. We'll have a presentation by the interim superintendent from the school district and many other topics. But we're going to recess the meeting until tomorrow at 4 p.m. in the name of Edward Marshall. Thank you. We're reconvening the meeting from March 12th on item DR5, I believe it was. A quorum is present. Are you sure? That was pulled last night. That was night. pulled. It wasn't yeah. pulled back. It was pulled. It was pulled. We're, we're here for DR5. And Madam Clerk is called to roll. Can we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? DR5. Staff report recommending approval of a lease agreement with the Form LLC for the off-site parking on city-owned property in the area of Century Boulevard, Prairie Avenue, and 104th Street. <laughs> four, staff, report? staff report. Actually, Mayor, can we have public comments, please? Please don't speak out. Please don't speak out in the audience, ma'am. Um, we didn't pull it. We convened. We, we convened. Mm -hmm. They could have spoken yesterday. Is that correct? Yes, so anyway, if there was any, if there was any confusion, if there was any confusion, Mr. you could have spoken yesterday. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor. Oh, Mr. Mayor. No, they had a report. Okay. Right please, yeah, please, it, please, please. Okay, okay, okay. You know, you didn't have access to the information either. So we'll open public comment on this com on this item right now. So please come into the microphone. know what goes on is the common thread that we all see you didn't want us to speak you pulled the item now you want to pretend that that didn't happen not only did we not have access to the information before last night's meeting you probably don't have the cameras running now so you think this is all just fun and games for the group of people here who are walking away so here's the preview of what you will experience in other mediums we all know well, I didn't put my hair up completely in rollers because I don't use them. But you apparently think that we are just a bunch of little old ladies who have never had a date in our lives. And so you can sell us for a freaking song because that, sir, is what you are doing. You're even bringing us the candy box. But notice, it's empty. 46 properties, you should be insulted. 
by your own staff that would present that to us at a seven year from now, $6.9 million, that's less than 128,000 parcel. Apparently you don't actually believe that they're gonna bring any value to this community or that price would be going up. What an absolute insult. By the way, since you wanna take us to dinner for a dollar, there's the dollar. You seem to think we're not even worth that. First district, you know, you guys uh, really think the people are fools. You know, you, you scammed us last night so that the people wouldn't be here to speak today, but there are a few of us here. You know, I, I actually had had a lot to say to you then, but, you know, I'm going to say this to you right now. If you then put this upon the people of Inglewood, you know, they are not dumb. Neither one of you, any one of you, that built for this thing will be elected dog catcher in any seat in this city, or maybe even the state. You know, I had a lot of things to say, and I'm gonna say it, so it's gonna be on deaf ears like everything that the residents of this city say. Number one, there should have been a financial analyst for the best use of these properties. You know, you elected people think that uh, you are elected to make decisions on behalf of the people. I believe that as you are elected to work for the people in our best interests, that you also should have our input, and you should listen fairly to our input, which you do not. You know, as a resident of the city, you know, I, I certainly hope that Madison Square Gardens uh, will work well for all of us and we'll build this city up, you know, because that's what all of us want. You know, uh, some of us uh, are not going to listen up and run away from our city. You know, we, we hope that uh, it will work. But, you know, to, to, to give those properties away like that, it's several years ago, they had given uh, those properties over there on Century for storage units you know, for uh, mm -hmm. uh, the things that they did. And I, I would bet that those properties probably sold for more than a year suggesting to sell these properties for way back there those years. Century Boulevard, it's a, it's a high traffic area, you know, and, and you, Mr. Morales, uh, you know that's partly in, in your area. You know, with all the people running up and down Century there, you know, a parking lot is certainly not the best use for that property. It's ridiculous, you know, that you then would even consider uh, making those properties a parking lot, you know, because if you had just allow other people to bid on those things, they're, they're, any one of the businesses probably would have come into the city and, and would have been glad to do something that would have been a tax base for this city. That uh, little bit of money that we're going to get for that property is really, really not. The city needs to take care of our youth. Some years ago, they had a, a promise that with the utility uh, bills that we passed, a tax initiative with the utilities. They said at the time that that was going to be for the youth and for the seniors. And that was one of the poises that they used to make that go. Uh, it didn't go, you know, I know that my time is up, but I will tell you that, uh, like I say, you guys won't be elected dog catcher by anybody in this city when you push that thing through. It's a shame, it's a shame. My name is Jim Vaughn. I'm out of the 2nd District. I'm also a block captain for the Hargrave Rural This is a shame what you guys are pulling here. Anybody knows the property you guys are going to give away in six years is well worth what you're at now. With the new improvements that we're working in, there's people in this community that are working hard to bring in, take care of historical things like the Fox Theater, bring art back into this country, the Jazz Festival back into here. You guys continue to give our property away, and yet you can put a 28% tax increase on our water rates in here for us to pay for this? Come on, let's start thinking about what the future of Englewood is, not the past and what not the present is. We are all, all hurting for money, yes, but let's don't give, it, let's don't give the town away. Let's, let's work on getting this town into something better than what it is.
Council of Ray Davis, 2nd District. Um, I, um, I don't know if you're really thinking this one through because I'm just going through it on the fly and there's some things that send up red flags for me. We're going to get $200,000 a year for these properties. That means we still technically own them and have to pay property tax. Add up how much that property tax is probably going to be. This isn't, this isn't going to be much money. It's going to probably almost be a wash. So, um, and then seven years down the road, there's an option to buy. Um, and it's I want Madison Square Garden to have a place in our city to be successful. It will lose us all. But if you, for lack of a better term, if we're popped out the baby with bath water, we'll, we'll look up, we'll have a nice, shiny uh, venue, and the city really isn't gaining anything from it. I'm sure you folks are going to give us a sound explanation vision and why you made it and why you're going to vote one way or the other. That's, that's what I'm just going to have to sit back and wait for. So I thank you for your time. How are you accepting this for job? Mayor, uh, City Council, I, I think that the idea of Madison Square Garden coming to England was a great idea. I just want to know who are the idiots, I say idiots, who wrote the contract. How are you going to buy something and don't have parking? Oh, let's buy some, get some parking three quarters of a mile away and get people there. You see, when the idea of bringing Madison Square Garden came to us, the citizens of Inglewood, we were told that it was going to be great for Inglewood. It wasn't going to cost us anything. You didn't tell us that we had to give away something. Now, I think, I think that when you write a contract, you should get some people who are experts in contract, not idiots. Idiots buffoons giving it away and you're proud that you're giving it away and as the gentleman said we taxpayers will subsidize your idiocy okay I voted for the mayor I voted for Miss Dunlap and I can vote against the mayor which I plan to do I think you're idiots My name is Willie A.G. and I live in the beautiful city of Inglewood and proud of it. I can read a little bit, but I, I don't think some people get up here, I don't think they can read. They, if they can read, they don't understand anything. What I'm seeing here is a proof, a lease. That's what I'm reading. Is it a lease? Uh, are you giving the property away? These people need to go to school. We got some retired teachers in here. They didn't do too, too good of a job on teaching these people some because they, they can read some, but they don't understand it. Welcome to the city of Inglewood, Madison Square Garden. I, I, I think the greatest thing could have happened when Faithful Central decided to sell this property to Madison Square Garden. Otherwise, we'd have had a bunch of apartments over there. What good is that going to do? What good is that property down there that's been there vacant for years and years, not bringing in anything, a blight to the city of Inglewood? Now, I'm sure Madison Square Garden is going to put in a nice parking structure down there going to bring people to the city. When Hollywood Park gets going, Madison Square Garden gets going, maybe we can do something for our streets in the city because we'll have the revenue coming here that, to take care of business. But these naysayers, just ignore them and go ahead on and take care, do what you was elected to do up there. I, I support you. I've been here a long time. I pay lots of taxes. I'm not on welfare. Believe me. Thank you very much. I'm going to left a dollar up there. I don't need it. I got plenty of it. 
Good afternoon, Mayor, City Council, and staff. I'm sure you're all aware that Inglewood property is some, some of the most sought after property in Southern California. And for you to give it away, to bring a venue in, and then give, give, give all our property away and leave the taxpayers holding quite a big bag is insane. It's insane. Uh, I do hope that um, Madison Square Garden comes with a, a venue that's going to benefit the people of the city. But before you made that choice, and you made that choice, why didn't you have the public's input in the first place? I'm sure there's a lot of intelligent people in this city who had, could have given you input about what to do with the vacant properties that you're planning on giving away. And when you give it away and they set up parking structures or parking lots, that's the easiest thing to sell. After seven years, I can see people coming in like <clears throat> mad to get that property. And, and I've said for many, many years, that sets us up for pure gentrification. And I think that's your bottom line plan. I don't know who's instructing you to do what you do. You're not uh, paying any attention to the residents of this city at all. Otherwise, you would not have taken this road to give away all of these expensive properties for a little bit of money. And I'm not quite so sure that you're giving them, giving them away for a little bit of money. That may be what's on paper, but we don't know what the back deals were. And I'm sure there have some, been some back deals. So you're not dealing with stupid people in this city. We know what's going on. Even though you're trying to keep it, you know, hush, hush. That's the reason for this 2 o'clock meeting. You don't want us here. I know you're very disappointed that we showed up in the numbers that we have showed up. Keep on. Keep going down the road you go. And the citizens are going to understand that if they don't cooperate in their politics, <clears throat> they are destined to be, to be led by their inferiors. And that's how I'm feeling right now, except for two people sitting on that dice. My name is Dan Wise, local merchant in Inglewood. I think you made some bad decisions here, ladies and gentlemen. You should check it over, renegotiate. Uh, first of all, on the lease, uh, apparently you still want us to pay the property taxes, or they want us to pay the property taxes. At the end of the seven years, you're talking about, what, $7 million? The real estate will be worth probably three or four times that much more at that time. This is not in the best interest of Inglewood, California. Thank you. Close public comment. We have to move one first. Right. Staff report. Staff report. Good evening, afternoon, Mayor and City Council. On January 30, 2012, the City Council and Redevelopment Agency approved an owner participation agreement among the City of Inglewood, MSG Form LLC, and the Form Enterprises. The OPA provides for a commercial rehabilitation loan of $18 million to assist MSG in the renovation of the form. On May 8, 2012, the Mayor and City Council approved the Zoning Ordinance Amendment and Development Agreement and accepted the categorical exemption for the project. Since these approvals for the form rehabilitation last spring, MSG has worked to ensure a successful rehabil rehabilitation and operation program for the forum in anticipation of its reopening. Although on-site parking at the forum is in compliance with city code requirements, it's not adequate when the forum's operating at full capacity. To address this concern, MSG has sought off-site parking options for reopening the forum. The proposed lease agreement provides MSG with the right to use certain real property consisting of approximately 4.82 acres of primarily vacant land owned by the city located in the area of Century Boulevard Prairie, 102nd, and 104th Streets. 
The proposed lease properties include eight non-contiguous parcels located both east and west of Prairie and south of Century Boulevard. MSG will improve the subject properties for 2,275 2, 2, parking spaces and will operate a shuttle service between the form and the off-site lease properties during the events at the form as needed. During the term of the lease agreement, MSG will seek an alternative permanent parking solution to replace their use of the lease properties for ongoing operation of the form. The major terms of the proposed lease agreement are as follows. As has already been stated, there's a provision for a lease payment to the city in the amount of $200,000. The ability of the city to use the lease properties for city-sponsored events and a lease to a third-party entity for private purposes when MSG is not using the property. MSG will be responsible for making improvements on the lease properties to accommodate parking, operating parking lots, and maintaining the site. Based on the completion of a phase one report for the properties, the city, the city warrants that the properties are, to its knowledge, free from environmental contamination with the exception of the properties um, at the address of 2016 to 2020 West Century Boulevard where potential environmental concerns have been identified. A seven-year lease term with an option for MSG to purchase the lease properties at the end of the lease term for an anticipated $6.9 million. Both the lease payments and any purchase proceeds will be used to reimburse the city for its costs related to acquiring the lease properties, with the remaining payments proceeds used to fund the noise mitigation program. The city has been in communication with the FAA regarding the terms of the proposed lease, and the city's approval is contingent upon FAA approval. That concludes my staff report, Mayor, the City Council. Any council questions or comments? I want to hear the last part again. The City has been in communication with the FAA regarding the terms of the proposed lease agreement, and the City's approval is contingent upon FAA approval. Council comments, Council Steele? Mm -hmm. oh, I pass at this time. Councilman Bella. I pass at this time as well. Councilman Clinton. I pass also. Okay, move item one. Second. No, uh, before you move, I would ask to be recognized. Uh, we've moved no, we've moved already. Oh, you moved already. So he can speak? Second. No, he can speak. Okay, so just for the record, um, you, moved, you moved that, Mr. Mayor? You moved the item, correct? Madam Clerk, why don't you tell them the first and second? Um, Butts and Morales. Hmm? Mayor Butts and Councilman Morales. Oh, okay. Um, oh, you started my time already. Would you please set the clock to five minutes, please? Mr. Mayor, would you instruct the timekeeper to do that? You started talking. You asked the question. Start them back at five. I just like to uh, ask a question, Mr. City Manager. Have we notified the public that we are taking bids for this lease agreement as well as purchase of this property? No, we have not done this that. This transaction. We, no, we have not, and it's not something that we would need to do. So, no, we have not done that. So, for the record, you're you're under the um, you have been advised by a legal counsel that it is not necessary for us to place this out to bid. No, we're not. Uh, in, uh, under that ob obligation. So we are not, uh, just clarifying, mm -hmm. you're stating for the record that we are not obligated to have this property go out to bid. That's correct. And you've been informed by that by whom? By our legal team. Mr. Saunders, mm -hmm. my, my city attorney, you're under the impression that we do not need to place this out for bid at this time? No, primarily this is a lease agreement with an option to buy and I have uh, already opined that no, we are not required to go out for a bid to do this. Okay, sir. So can you tell me the mineral rights to this property? There makes no, there's no mention of the mineral rights in this document. Maybe there is. Can you point to me where who controls the mineral rights for the property? The owner of the property. The owner of the property. So in seven years, the owner of the property will control all mineral rights, correct? Yes. Well, here's my issue. We happen to have a water well on one of these parcels of property. Parcel number 3901 right there. 
So water well. We're not. That's not part of the lease properties where the site where the water well is. But the aquifer runs underneath all these properties. Mm -hmm. And so my concern is, is that number one, is that the mineral rights should stay with the city. If we were even to consider doing this, and, there, and it's not contained in the document, nothing mentioned about water rights. That means they could very well sink their own well and pump our water and sell it because there's no mention of water rights. Is there, Mr. Saunders, is there any mention of water rights in the document? No, but in order Mineral to pump, rights. in order to pump water, water is uh, uh, allocated by the water master and the uh, the basins, uh, the west basin and other basins that control the water, and that water has already been allocated among various entities in the city. That has been done years ago, but and and that does not give any new person, even though they would purchase the property the right to pump water out of there without having prior permission from the water basin district. Well, that pretty much puts our future in the water basin district's hands. It seems to me that we would want to be in control of our own future and have it actually documented here that, they, that we control all mineral and water rights on said property since we do have a well there. So we would not find ourselves in some type of legal action. In order to change the water distribution rights, a lawsuit would have to be filed. And one, basically allowing a new entity to have a right to pump water. So why would we even, we should not, in my opinion, once again, we should have it clearly stated that water rights, mineral rights, are not included in the sale of this property. Secondly, Mr. A.G., you seem to be under the impression that a parking structure of some sort <coughs> will be built. Just for the record, a level of gravel is going to be spread across these parcels. A level of gravel, a level of gravel shall be used for ground cover of these parcels. So the public does not have a misconception of what is to be done with this property in reference to beautification. Also. I have concerns dealing with this part, with this, with the situation where I feel as though this is basically an attempted bailout of our current residential sound insulation program, which is what it actually is. Because, Mr. City Manager, the fund, the, when funds are received from this parcel, it will be returned to whom, from after the mm -hmm. sale. It'll go into our sound mitigation program. To our sound mitigation program. Mm -hmm. So it seems that in closing, with 17 seconds left, that since property directly across the street from the forum is selling for a million and a half dollars per acre, and since Man Madison Square Garden's representatives came to this council meeting and stated very clearly that there was not a parking problem, that they had it totally under control, it would seem to me that less than $475,000 per acre when right across the street from the forum, property is selling for a million and a half dollars per acre, vacant land, it seems to me that we're not getting the best deal for our stockholders, which are the residents of the city of Inglewood. Because after all, we are a corporation just like Madison Square Garden, and our job, our responsibility, is to look out for our stockholders, our shareholders, just as they are looking out for theirs. It's nothing personal. It's just business. Thank you. Uh, for item number, uh, the city clerk would please read the item so the public knows what we're voting on. You mean DR five, or one? the 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 recommendation? Item well, number one. one. Just okay. Number one. Please. Except a categoric exemption for offsite parking for the form. Council member Stevens. No. Dunlap. No, excuse me. No. No. Just for clarification, no. Dunlap. Aye. Morales. Aye. Franklin. Aye. Mayor Buds. Aye. We'll move items two through uh, four. Through four. Second. Um, I'd like them voted on uh, individually. I didn't hear you. Yeah. That's up to them. That's up to you. She, uh, uh, Councilwoman Dunlap wants it to be voted on individually. That's up to the body. I don't mind. I don't mind. Okay, move. 
move item two. Okay, so um, item number two is approved lease agreement. Can I get a motion? What was that, Madam Speaker? Item number two is to approve the lease agreement. So will the motion remain the same? So. I'm just telling you what's okay, on this. See, look, we move items two through four. Okay, right? got and you. And we have a second. And then if we do them one at a time, then we go through 20 minutes of talking. I, 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 I understand. So, so I'm going to leave my motion in place. Okay. Maybe we should do 20 Council Member Stevens. A point of order. I'd like to speak on the item. I'm going to ask the question once again of city manager. Are you absolutely positive that we do not have to place this lease agreement and open it up for bid? Yes. Really? And so if, uh, let me ask you this question. If we find ourselves in litigation, what will, what, what will you, what would, what, what, what do we do then? What will happen then? You may very well be gone, not here. You, you, you're that confident that well, we're. Well, we accept, we place out RFPs for other things. Here we are entering into a lease agreement, and you do not believe that we need to place it out for an RFP to see that they've obtained the best possible price for our residents. Because understand, in the past, I know Mr. Morales has stated before, in the past that we have had developers come and they've been unsuccessful. In the past, whenever that property was proposed to be developed, the developer had to acquire the Daiichi Inn. He had to acquire the storage facilities. He had to acquire the freight forwarding facilities. He also had to obtain, um, um, uh, acquire the Smart Detail Wax Company, which is that huge two-acre brand new building that was built there. They had to assemble all those parcels of land before we would even consider making available to them the FAA properties that were purchased with FAA funding. Because see, the city was acquiring property on Century rather than sound insulating people's homes back then. And so now this situation is such till those properties will be able to be sold individually. The developer of Madison Square Garden even though they're just simply developing a parking lot with a surface of gravel, it is not necessary for them to acquire the roadway in the Daiichi and the uh, storage facility, the, um, the, the freight forwarding facility. The last developer that came through here was Mr. McAllister, who I spoke to, because I've spoken to. He's a world of information. He wishes he would have gotten this opportunity. And the bottom line is that we required him to assemble all those properties. But this situation, we're just going to just simply piecemeal it. They can, pick, they can pretty much just take just the FAA portions of property. Because we had this vision that we wanted to build a theater, a mall. And also, what, happened, what about this, Mr. Fields? If Mr. Swallow, directly across the street, decides to make dramatic improvements at the casino. Remember, the Harry Grand Pavilion is multi-level and he has a reputation up north of going up, having his casinos on multiple floors. What happens if all of a sudden that, that project just takes off and the Hollywood Park project takes off and in seven years we're looking at a tremendous development across the street but yet we've given away this opportunity for $475,000 per acre. The gateway to Los Angeles International Airport, $475,000 per acre. And so I want to ask you this final question with a minute and 14 seconds left. And I'll wait for your answer. The lease payments that are going to be made, will that be applied to the actual purchase price in this deal? 
I didn't think so. I, no, those the lease payments will not be a part of the purchase price at the end of the deal. They will not be applied no, to the not. purchase price. No. Well, I have 44 seconds left. I beg to differ with you on that one, but I'll accept it at this time. I'm going to conclude. Madam City Clerk. Council yeah, members. Actually, I'd like to speak. Uh, to begin with, uh, Mayor, as chair of this meeting, I find it very disturbing that you would suggest that by voting on each of these items independently would create 20 minutes of talking. I find that offensive. <laughs> this is a deliberative body. That's our role, is to discuss these items. And it's bad enough that this meeting is not being televised, so the general public won't know about it at all. Regardless of the points of view here, regardless of the outcome of the vote, it's almost irrelevant to my point. Uh, we should be all for transparency. Uh, this document was not made public. I mean, well, it was less than 20 hours. Uh, this document should have been presented at a regular evening council meeting, just so our community believes they're being properly represented. And once again, I'm going to repeat, regardless of the outcome of the vote, it's about how we are presenting ourselves to the public. It shouldn't be at a daytime meeting. It shouldn't be where the contract isn't available. I was told two weeks ago that this document would be made public, and it was not. Uh, changes kept being made. Well, then you know what? It should have just been next Tuesday. If next Tuesday was a day meeting, then that's the council majority's fault because all of our meetings should be in the evening, not in the daytime. Um, and I, like I said, I'm really concerned that this meeting is not being televised because it, it's very, very important. Um, is the best use of these parcels a parking lot? I doubt it. Is MSG getting a good deal? Actually, they're getting a phenomenally good deal. So I'm going to hold two people responsible for that, not the corporate interests, because you're in business and this is what you do. You're representing your interests. I'm going to hold the two people responsible, our mayor, most specifically, and our city manager, but more so the mayor. Uh, so when people talk about this out in the community, I want them to hold you, Mayor, responsible for the deal points that the public does not believe is in their best interest. You, most specifically. But in looking at the full picture, how interested are we as a community to have this <coughs> revitalized entertainment venue called the Forum, purchased by Madison Square Garden? How interested are we in a community as a community for that? And how reliable is Walmart, the neighbor to the south, with regard to their 60 acres, making it available for parking? Remember that six that acre that acreage to the south is historically been used for overflow parking for the forum. When this council had an opportunity a number of years ago under my initiative to purchase that property through intimate domain, we didn't do it. The council majority <coughs> did not support that. We always should have controlled that property because then we could have been much more of assistance to Madison Square Garden if we controlled it. This body, this majority failed to have the vision to have acquired that property. But now we are where we are. You cannot rely upon Walmart to be a good neighbor. That's a given. So then what? If they don't have parking, what? We say, all right, well, we don't want the $50 million in renovation. We in this city don't need this wonderful entertainment venue that's putting us back on the map. The enthusiasm in our community over Madison Square Garden coming here has been phenomenal. It's been phenomenal ever since they first came to us with the interest of purchasing the forum. People are excited again about the future of this city. When the Prince concerts were held, it reminded people of what we once had, bringing thousands of people into the city of Inglewood for entertainment, quality entertainment. It was exciting. This is in the best interest of the city for our sense of well-being. 
most of the residents of this community were here when we lost the Lakers and the King. It was a real blow to our sense of self as a city. Madison Square Garden now coming in two years ago and saying, we're looking at your city. We want to spend $50 million <coughs> revitalizing this facility. We want to bring entertainment back, something that the city of England can be proud of. The deal is very poorly written for our community. I blame the person to my left. But it's not worth the risk to me to not have Madison Square Garden come here because I think it's what our city needs. It's what we desire. It will bring quality jobs. A at the time, it's being remodeled. $50 million worth of prevailing wage jobs, in addition to the notoriety we will receive as a destination city in the future. Thank you. Let me just start by saying you can't have it both ways. <laughs> you know, every, the last uh, portion that you heard is absolutely true. You know, uh, the fact that MSG is here is a good move for the city. You know, the fact that they chose this city to reestablish the forum is a great move. We can't expect to have them here and not help them succeed, period. You know, there was a lot being said about the land uh, that's being uh, uh, in question here today. You know, yes, it was put out to bid. It was held in under bid uh, for close to three years, I believe, tied up in exclusive, something like three years. Never happened. It's correct that that uh, there was certain expectations on purchasing the land for that developer. But the fact is, that wasn't our idea. That was what the developer came up with. So it wasn't something that we said, go buy everything. No, they said, we will buy everything and make it happen. Didn't happen. You know, those are things that, that need to be part of this conversation. You know, the water rights. You know, w with water, whether there's water or not, you know, you need the rights to pump water. Just like the city, we have water down underneath the ground. And stop me if I'm wrong, Cal, but uh, if you don't have the rights to pump it, you can't pump it. You have only certain acre feet per, per year uh, to be able to do it. And if you don't, you can't do it. So the bottom line is, just because there's, there's something down there doesn't mean uh, you know, we're selling. We have no rights of, of our water rights that are being sold, leased, or anything else right now. Correct, Mr. Saunders? There was just a portion, each year, a portion of our water rights that we do not use, we uh, sell to Golden State Water. Yeah, but we're not selling them here today. No, we're not selling not them today. Correct. And so we're aware of that. And the only reason we sell those every year is because we don't have the capacity in our infrastructure to pump it ourselves. So that's, that's what it is in, in, in regards to the water rights. The property value across the street, 1.5 million on the form. That's what they're selling it for. That's not what people are paying because they would have sold it by now. You know, that's the truth. You know, Walmart, another thing that was said here earlier, uh, we can't trust them in order to help us out here. You know, that's exactly why we're taking this step, because we cannot trust Walmart. If we could, if we thought they were going to make a good deal uh, to help us get parking there, we wouldn't have to do this. You know, but the truth is that, you know, we're either going to become partners with one of the, the, the biggest entertainment company in the country, or we're not. You know, like I said, Every time we voted on something for Hollywood Park property uh, in, in the coming project, we've had to hear how they're getting some sort of favor. You know, this is part of what partnering up to bring something this big to the city. This is what it takes. When we went through the village at Century, the $5 per square foot, one of the first years, I believe it was my first year here, uh, it was massive, the line of folks who came out and said, don't do it. One of the most successful developments in the last 10 years in the city of Inglewood and probably will be established for a long time. You know, those are the kind of things that, that these decisions make happen. The, um, the fact is that we're waiting for FAA approval once we do, uh, if this goes through. You know, even the state law and redevelopment, when it existed, established these tools for cities like us 
to be able to bring this type of development here. Cities like us, when we need these type of, of arrangements, that's what the law provides for us to establish. So that's what we're doing here today. We're either gonna move forward on this project or we should just tell them, you know what, we'll see you later. You know, we need to decide, but we cannot have it both ways. We cannot say, yeah, welcome, give us 100 concerts a year, you know, make sure you build a first class venue and then not do our part. You know, period. So, anyway, that, those are my comments for now. I'm sure we'll get another opportunity. No, you won't. Yeah. Councilman Franklin. Uh, thank you. I uh, thank my colleague for speaking uh, from the heart and the, com and the compassion you had. Uh, and let's go back a little bit because uh, the Councilman Morales and I uh, came into office in the year of 2003, although he has more seniority than myself. But these were issues that was vetted before we came on board. And it had to do with what is good for the city. And what's being discussed then, what became a reality during our tenure was the village at Century. And that, true enough, uh, the same individuals you hear now venting, including on the dais, were the same individuals that tried to block that development when it was at $5 and $9 a square foot, when FAA gave us the consent that we were to sell it at the market rate at that time. No different than today, except that we moved over a decade past and I have to tell you, there's one resident that comes here faithfully in my district that has chastised this council repeatedly about doing some development with our tumbleweed field. Repeatedly said that. And now we have an opportunity, and we did not once but twice, two RFPs. The first RFP th that, that came out had to do specifically with the 11 acres undeveloped that the city had and we gave the exclusive to that particular developer who had a bigger dream than what the city's RFP called for. And that developer said, we have the financial wherewithal to do the site assemblage that we need that we wanted to go beyond that. And it kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger to the point that they had reached an, a magnitude that they could no longer do the development because they exceeded the potential development that needed to do due to financing. Then they came back to the council and said, I want you, city council, to be the, the government arm and use your threat of eminent domain to do a land acquisition, pay the price, pay the market price, which we have to do when we do the land acquisition for eminent domain, and then we will talk to you about how we're gonna pay you back. And we said, no, we don't do business like that. And eventually, that project faded away. We had another developer that said, I can do a development, and this is on the southwest corner of Prairie and Century, and said, I too have a vision, and we did an RFP. But this same developer said, I want to go beyond the scope of the agency at that time's uh, eligibility to acquire the property. And we said the same thing. If you're going to acquire this additional property, and if we were to use the threat of eminent domain of the property we do not own, we would be only a conduit. You would pay exactly what price we got, we would just give you the bill. And they said, well, we can negotiate with you on a discount. I said, no, that's not a, that's not a discussion. And it faded away. So we've had a number of key quality developers that said they had the wherewithal, but when the rubber met the road, it wasn't there. Now we have an opportunity where we have been chastised repeatedly. When, when the mayor uh, and the council members go to Washington, we are bombarded by FAA and said, we gave you the money for land acquisition for the underneath the flight path to remove families. And we gave you not to become land barons. We gave it for you to develop. This council does not have the money to develop that land and we don't, it won't be available in the future. And FAA said, you sell that land and you make sure that we do in fact start getting revenue so we can start moving this residential sound isolation program forward. So as a consequence, this council, whether the all council won't acknowledge or not, gave permission for the mayor to lead the dialogue in negotiating. And as the mayor, he rightfully had that, that authority and he frequently gave us updates of what was going on. We may not like all of it, 
And that's where the attorney, the city managers came in and said this or that, and why we can't do this, why we can't do that. But all said and done, we're here today to take action. So if this is not something that just came out of the box. This is something that's been ongoing. Had Walmart identified that they wanted to be good corporate neighbors, they could have easily made the price available. And no one said we would buy it below your market rate. We would buy it at market rate. They still did not want to, to sell. They tried to penalize us as a city because you, the taxpayer, said we don't want you in here to have a, be a sovereign nation of our independence of the city's government. And as a consequence, we prevailed. And you prevailed. And so as a consequence, we need to move forward. And to do that is making this project happen. And today, we're here to do that. And I thank you. Thank you. I want to tell you that I never cease to be amazed. I just heard one of the most duplicitous pieces of double talk that I've ever heard. Let's blame the mayor for this yes. deal. But we need to do it. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you, please don't well, interrupt me. I'm going to say, blame me for this. Blame me for coming into a situation with a $17.6 million structural deficit and overseeing two years of balanced budget. Blame me for going to Washington the first year I was here getting $20 million from the FAA and have them tell us, hey, what are you going to do with those parcels that you have? You haven't recycled them yet. I said, we're working on it. Blame me for $15 million we received in December of 2012 for residential sound insulation that we're going to marry with other monies that law was going to give us because now we fixed our relationship with them to do a thousand homes in this coming year and hopefully do a thousand homes the next year. Blame me for that too. Blame me because I understand that Walmart is a 60 acres that are contiguous and more valuable than these disjointed parcels that we have on Century, some of them that were purchased in excess of 25 years ago and have lain fallow all that time. Most of these parcels have been there for 10 years or more. There have been exclusive negotiating agreements for them, and nothing has materialized. It's like having a car that you really like. It's this old beat-up Ford, but you say it's a classic. And funny, nobody wants to pay your price for it. So it sits there in your garage. Blame me if I have sense enough to understand that Walmart is not going to give a long-term parking solution to MSG. And I understand the business model that says that you really can't invest 50 to 75 million in something that you don't know you'll be able to operate to capacity. And blame me for believing that there'll be some other solution that manifests itself in the next seven years so that we'll have our cake and eat it too. That we won't end up selling the parcels, that they'll have their parking, we'll have received revenue for fallow land all this time, someone will at least have made it clean and decent. Blame me for understanding that most of those parcels don't front Century, they front 102. Blame me for carving out the 238,000 square feet of property that actually front Century and that will give us development opportunities. Blame me for that too. And blame me for having the guts and the sense to take all the abuse that I do <laughs> and work as long as I do to move this city forward. And I have no regrets for that. And I will take it. And you can blame these two guys too because it doesn't happen without them. And, and I'll bet you there's four votes here today. I'll bet you. So, so what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, no, we, first of all, we are on television. And no, we didn't need to talk for about an hour for this because it comes down to this. Businesses locate in cities based upon their business model and the opportunities that will exist. There are more opportunities to locate in Beverly Hills, Culver City, Redondo Beach, Manhattan Beach, because you're more guaranteed success. And so for a billion dollar company to make their only West Coast operation here in the city of Inglewood, there's going to be some give and take. Common sense will tell you that. I would love to get, to get what everybody believes that land is worth, but I'll tell you, Cushman Wakefield did an appraisal. That's where the number came from. We had that appraisal reviewed. So this is in the best interest of the city. This is that car that's sitting in the garage that we think is worth so much. It's worth what it's worth. And the proof's in the pudding. The, the free market will take care of snapping up land. And that land has laid there some parcels 25, I think as many as 30 years. So those are my comments.
Madam City Clerk. Okay, so we're going to be voting each one, and we're on number two, and that's no, approved. No, we're voting one together. All together? Mm -hmm. oh, okay, we're back to that. All right, then. Uh, uh, all together, Council Members Stevens. Uh, excuse me, Madam City Clerk. We're voting on item two, two three, three, and, and four. four. Mm -hmm. That was a motion. Remember, the mayor didn't want to allow us to speak up here for 25 minutes. He thought that was too long for us to deliberate. Actually, it would have been 75, but go ahead. Council Member Stevens. Council Member Stevens. You realize that there is an issue here of dealing with environmental impact report, Mr. Mayor, correct? Environmental analysis? Of course I do. Go ahead. Council Member Stevens. No. Councilwoman Judy Dunlap. Aye. Councilman Morales. Aye. Councilman Franklin. Aye. Mayor Buds. Aye. Adjourned. Adjourned? No, I think we're going to have public comment.